As voted on by you guys, we are going to be doing a 10-year rebuild of the Seattle Seahawks, a team that has been stuck at 9-8 and eight for the last two seasons now. Not lucky enough this latest season, though, to make the wild card round. And I'm not really sure what it's going to take to get this team over nine wins. It feels like the offense, maybe the offensive line should be improved a little bit, is good enough. Uh, you know, Geno Smith, weirdly enough, graded higher last year than the year before by Pro Football Focus. But obviously they've been, uh, you know, hit or miss at times. There's just no arguing he was not as good last year as he was the year before. He dropped five whole completion percentage. I don't care if you have 45,000 drops. You're dropping 5% completion percentage. You are not having as good of a year. I mean, it's just simple fact. That's just, I don't care. Some numbers lie. Some numbers are misleading, but that is a huge drop off. It was still a good passing attack, but considering the weapons they have, it should have been better, especially with the emergence of Kenneth Walker, which once again, even their rushing numbers weren't that great. They were a team that I think, at least on offense, kind of underperformed. I mean, this is a super stacked squad. They even went JSN to be like, you know what? We're going to just be impossible to stop. And while sometimes they were, that wasn't always the case. Obviously, uh, Metcalf, I don't know why he dropped so hard down to an 86. I would have put him at 88, 89, maybe a little higher even. Um, not his best year, but definitely not an 86 overall season. I think it's 88 plus. Uh, Lockett, he's still great, but obviously aging. And then JSN, considering the talent around the the you know him on this team, it definitely would be considered a uh, not a down year because he was a rookie, but an underachieving year, if you will. A lot of people thought he was going to do a lot better than that. I know it's a slot position, but it just felt like, who are you going to guard on this offense, right? Like, you, you have to guard Metcalf because he'll kill you over top. You have to guard Lockett because he's proven. I, I mean, he's like the odd man out, even though he's, you know, projected to be super good. If you're going to leave anyone single, it's going to be the slot corner uh, wide receiver, right? So... Little would have thought a little bit better of him, honestly. Uh, the running back duo, though, they are great. They just got to run the ball a little bit more. Noah Fant, he really just hasn't played well anywhere, especially on the Seahawks team. O line, you know the tackles, they're they're potentially going to be good down the line, but injury concerns are very prevalent. Obviously, with Lucas and then Cross, seems like he didn't play as well as he once was after he was injured. So definitely some concerns there. Interior of the line, obviously, they added Christian Hayes the supposed guard who we're going to be playing at center because that's our biggest positional need. Uh, and then, you know, obviously the rest, we're going to have to replace a lot of linemen, at least three in this rebuild. And even in real life, you argue two, maybe three. Uh, we'll see what happens there. And then Gina Smith, we talked about already with Sam Howell being the backup, kind of maybe worries about is Gino's age kept catching up with them? Uh, you know, is were the Seahawks just a little too late getting in Gino to have that window open? We'll see. But, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to have a young, okay potential guy. I'm not going to say great potential because he's had opportunities now and really hasn't grown a whole lot. But he has the cannon. But, yeah, with his age, probably will start for us next season. And in a 10-year rebuild, it makes a little more sense. We'll actually have a chance with him, probably. Uh, but let's move on to the defensive side of the ball, where they're even worse. They are one of the worst, if not the worst, run defense in the league. And I only have to imagine them trying to sell out for the run has cost the coverage team a little bit. Because, you know, this isn't even what the safety group looked like. They've replaced their entire safety room. But this is one of the best cornerback duos in the league. And you would assume with that alone, you would think their coverage ratings would be better than they are. They're not terrible, but they're also not that good. You know, you think if you got that bad of a run defense, surely the pass game, especially with this good of uh, DBs, is going to be better. It is, but not by a whole lot. Of course, they added Byron Murphy, the first rounder, who uh, definitely looks to change this defensive lineup a little bit, try their best to uh, stop the run as they have invested heavily. You know, that first round pick, a second round pick for Leonard Williams. Draymond Jones was a very expensive player. They are trying their best to stop the run will it happen though also seems a little weird to have byron murphy as the nose tackle but based on weight alone i think he is technically the heaviest especially considering the condensedness of his size like a 6'5 302 pounder is definitely not as like bulky as a 6 foot 1 302 pounder which even then murphy still got more than that he's 308 so uh you know definitely uh the biggest of the bunch technically so he's gonna play a nose tackle for us this season, but we might end up drafting a new one next year. Um, looking at safeties, Julian Love was not bad. Mafe, you could have argued star Dev. Baker's been, you know, about an 81 overall. Pretty fair. And then apparently Tyler Dodson was elite last year. You know, I can't look at every single player, every single team perfectly. So sometimes I do have to look at pro football focus for some of the lesser known players. 
And if they got him rated that high, you would have to at least assume he was better than good, right? Uh, and then Iwosu, uh, I think last time, I can't remember who I compared him to, but it was a really good comp. Was it like Leonard Floyd? Like he's not going to be elite for you, but he'll he'll be good. He'll be good enough to start. But you know, you probably would like to have someone with a higher potential down the line. So uh, you know, good enough to start now, but we'll look for a replacement. Uh, and honestly, not even just cornerback duo, but Michael Jackson here. He he is also pretty damn good. So they have one of the best uh, cornerback trios, not duos, in the league. And uh, it's hopefully, with a better run defense, going to make them a really good defense again. Also, some of the other names we didn't really mention is Tyrese Knight, who's, I mean, a little bit faster. You know, uh, he's, he's all right. And then you have Barner, you know, another guy that's kind of slow for the position. Uh, I'm not saying that Tyrese Knight is slow for the position, but as far as, like, all these hybrid uber fast linebackers we're seeing you know technically slow or slower than them i suppose i've been meaning to do a panthers rebuild as well and that was the one that's the second highest voted so we might do another poll and throw the panthers on there again and whether they win it or not you know we we kind of get a gauging of like okay yeah you guys want to see a panthers rebuild or whatnot but uh, if there's any other teams you want to see or a different challenge rebuild idea, ooh, I love the camp standout because no matter what, you automatically win. Unless it's a linebacker. There you go. Look at that. I mean, automatic plus three to power move and finesse. But yeah, let me know what teams you want to see next. And uh, if you guys end up enjoying the video, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new or do a ton of franchise stuff here on Madden. And obviously soon to be some uh, some content on NCAA 25 or College Football 25. If you're not new, I do appreciate your support on the channel. Anyways, not sure when the next rebuild will be, but hopefully you guys had a good 4th of July and you're going to have a good weekend. Uh, we'll have the Bison Super Bowl sometime this weekend, maybe even Sunday, I'm not sure. I kind of already mentioned it. I was really planning on doing another season, but realistically, the way YouTube's algorithm works and just how close we are to College Football 25... Win or lose, still yet have you know still have yet to play that actual Super Bowl. It's gonna be the last season, I think. I mean, it would be probably pretty good if we ended with a Super Bowl win, but at the same time, the spontaneousness of just whatever happens—if we lose, we lose—would also be. I mean, it is what it is. I don't. I don't think we can lose. Getting to the Super Bowl—that's a win. Negotiation time. Wow, this team is broke as hell. They signed Mike Jackson to a contract extension. I don't know if it was a long term though. It might have been a one year, but apparently we don't have many other names. Like I said, Mike Jackson is pretty good. In real life, uh, but in game is a different story. 26-year-old normal, don't really have a use for him, to be honest. Maybe the biggest fold in the history of all things human life. Moffat could have been star dev. Oh, it's so free. We didn't get it anyways, but I didn't even know you could get a freaking breakout for a 32-year-old. That's crazy. And if we lose this thing, the Seahawks could do the funniest thing ever. Will they lose? They did! They made the playoffs, but it's technically three straight seasons of 9-8. and eight. Now, I will say, technically, it's it's really just like a perfect repeat of this latest season, because obviously we have the the regular roster from, uh, or uh, schedule from 2023, because, you know, you can only do so much in this realm of Madden. But uh, I don't know exactly which teams they lost to in real life, but I can tell you they went 9-8 and eight with this schedule, which is pretty crazy that it happened again. Uh, but let's take a look at the stats and awards. Can't imagine Gino was too great. I looked at him earlier in the season. Wasn't the best. 28 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, 3,200 yards. It's not bad, but it's really the scheme that's doing it to him. But we definitely would like to see higher numbers. Kenneth was pretty good. Uh, the receivers, I mean, it's, it's going to happen if you're running the ball mainly. Uh, O-line, really not impressed. Uh, defensively, Leonard Williams, very impressed with nine sacks. Draymond Jones with eight. Mafia with six and a half, fair enough. And then the rest, oof, terrible. Mike Jackson with th uh, four interceptions. Could be a dev up, not that it'll matter to us. And then Jason Myers potentially needs to be replaced, missing six kicks. Dixon was amazing. And no special teams success. 26th offensive yardage, which is crazy bad. MVP goes to Mahomes. No one's really shocked. Devs of the up, none to be seen for us. Uh, quarterback, where was he? Number ninth. Ninth best quarterback in the NFC is pretty bad. Uh, Kenneth all the way down to 10. Which is pretty absurd, actually. Metcalf at 5. Very high compared to where I thought he would have been. D-line at number 7. Linebacker, no. DB at number 8. Kicker, definitely not. But a playoff berth. To our surprise, I really didn't think we were going to make it. Going against the Niners, this could be really bad. Here we go. End of the game. The Niners with the first score of the game. 7-3. to three. And now, after a field goal by us, they get a touchdown. So it's 14-3. to three. Nice drive. We get 6. Down by uh, 8. 
Still in this game, it might be a little bit tougher now that it's 11 points, but we get the touchdown with a two-point. It's only a three-point game. We just need a stop, which we're not going to get. Eight minutes left. We need to score. And that pick will unfortunately seal it. 31-14. to 14. It looks... Well, 31-21. 30, to 21. It looked a little bit worse for a moment there than it actually was. It was pretty close throughout, but just couldn't catch up. Couldn't catch up. Uh, Gino was not very good. Rushing was not very good. You know, just not a very good game, simply put. That's just... The descri uh, descriptor, not very good. A little awkward making the playoffs, though, because I don't know what we're going to do with Gino. If he regresses hard, I can't fix him because it wasn't a bad season, but it wasn't that good either. It was the ninth best quarterback in the NFC, which the NFC is known to have the worst of the quarterbacks come conference to conference. So, you know, what is he like? 15th best at best, which, I mean, I guess his contract would actually reflect that, but still, why not go Howell, see what he's got? Similar ratings, probably especially after the regression. Andy's way younger. So we'll see. And, uh, you know, the way the contract's uh, structured, we'd actually save $26 million free, cleared uh, by releasing him. Obviously, we lose the 13 mil dead, but it was a 39 mil, you know, you subtracted. Um, Ravens, 27-21, do win. Uh, and we'll take a look at our dev ups. If we had any, Gino could have went to star, though. And he didn't. That is a painful one to see. Uh, Kenneth, no dev up. Really sucks. I was hoping he would get one. And defensively, I don't think we got a dev up here. So uh, kind of a wasted season, especially since we didn't have a good draft pick to go with it. All right, negotiations. It was really just two after all. Mike Jackson didn't even go up in dev. So as much as he's pretty valuable, I'm going to go Madden realism and realistically not get a whole lot of value out of him sticking around. Uh, but let's go into free agency. Usually you can't spend money, but that's usually later on. So the first three, four, five years, maybe you don't hate it as much spending money, but... Uh, at the same time, the the names that are here, outside of uh, David Bakhtiari, I don't know if we're going to spend anything. Uh, maybe Kicker. I don't know if uh, Myers is like a long-term contract, but I don't think I've seen him. Maybe didn't say we had any retirements, though, so that wouldn't make any sense, actually, that he would have retired. So unless we go David Bakhtiari, which honestly, as far as our offensive line is concerned, not really our biggest replacement situation. Uh, Cesar Ruiz, maybe, but that's like a super tiny bandage for a huge gash on this team um tight end would actually be nice too i think we have to draft one early to try to get somebody developed but yeah a pretty weak free agent class is going to lead to us uh, holding on to our pennies we are now into the draft and uh i probably will end up just going all the way to the raiders with travis hunter like i said it's kind of crazy how you know, we had that uh, Patriots rebuild where we took Travis Hunter at three, and he went number one overall this time. Um, but, yeah, we have so many needs that I probably will just go all the way down to 23, but I will still slow sim it just in case a name I really want ends up showing up or sticking out a little bit longer. Ewers, maybe at 23 or close to 23, but are we even ready for a quarterback? Do we even need a quarterback that bad? I don't know. We need safety. We need edge. We need a lot of positions, so... Am I really that push for a quarterback when we still are kind of far away from a competent roster? I don't know. Um, but I will say if we do want a quarterback, that option is available, unfortunately. Uh, we have options on top of options. Sanders, I think, is projected to go a bit higher than uh, 23, but we'll see what we want to do. Uh, Ewers might still be our guy. Maybe quarterback in general isn't. What we're going to go for is... Yeah, we got safeties on top of safeties on top of it. Um, edge... Scorton, we know that is uh, a normal dev player. 6'3", 22-year-old uh, Trey Moore could be our option at edge. What about other players? Burke, Johnny Walker, who's a little more raw looking. Uh, I don't know. Do I want to go... Oh, I could also go tight end. We could use tight end badly. Mason Taylor, he's 22, 6'5". You know what? I'm going to go... Real life Seahawks route. I'm gonna keep adding weapons. Mason Taylor, hidden dev, 89 speed, 91 excel, 20 year old, six foot five guy. He'll be here for the rest of this rebuild, assuming he doesn't suck, and that's really all that matters. Then we move on to 23 in this round. Did I end up trading the wrong draft pick off? I think I may have. Uh, quarterback, there is still options like Alar or Aller. I don't even know that's his name. Maybe it's like you can't put the name. Uh, together and it, like because it says a swear word or something, but I don't know if I really want quarterback when this is the group we're looking at. I would probably rather have uh, a safety or a pass rusher, which I'm not sure if either are available. 
Been looking at safety. I don't know if I really like Dylan here. It kind of looks like his last name is how Mike Tyson would pronounce cinnamon. Um, I don't know. He, he, the speed looks good, the 40, but the left side is like telling me, no, 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 it's not very good. Do need a safety pretty bad, but badly, but we could also go with like a pass rusher. I think uh, Patrick Payton is here, 22 years old, 6'5", decently athletic. Probably, I would imagine, pass rusher, A to C power move. Don't really know. We also could go with uh, Yuman Mielin, which you know, he's pretty damn good. Decently fast. He's got the size to play uh, like 3-4. Yeah, I think he might be our new right outside linebacker, Uman Mielin. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And uh, he's not the fastest, but yeah, it also sounds like <laughs> I'm asking people if I if they don't mind I'm a little loud. You mind me yelling. That's, that's what it kind of sounds like. I, I feel like it was a little bit of a reach, so I had to explain it, which means the joke sucks because I had to explain the joke. Just forget I said anything. Yeah, we're going to go with Mike Tyson Cinnamon here in the third round. Dylan Cinnamon. And he's normal dev, but he's going to be starter. 20 years old. Hopefully he's got upside with uh, decent... Zone coverage or something. Uh, we definitely need an offensive lineman. So uh, I'm going to go to this next round and see. Ooh, Patrick Payne went all the way there to the Ravens. See if there's any linemen here worth trading up for. Be nice to add at least one lineman. Uh, some sort of guard or... Uh, yeah, guard, really. Just left guard, right guard is really the biggest needs. Fano. Okay, so we got some names here, but how many of them are really good? Dewberry or Spindler I'd probably be willing to go for. And even Slaughter. We know he's normal dev, but he's not bad. Yeah, there's three names I'm willing... Four names... Okay, there's a lot of names I'm willing to go for. We're just going to keep going until we're down to, like, one of them. Maybe we can trade up for two of them if we wait long enough. All right, so two of my guards are just went in front of me, and I really don't want to do Dellinger again because we know he's hidden dev, and I feel like it's kind of cheesy knowing the guy's dev and uh, taking them. Uh, Uman Miel and I actually completely forgot that he was hidden. I actually thought he was faster than that, and I thought he was normal, but I was just going to deal with it. But he actually was hidden, which, I, I mean, that threw me off, to be honest. So I kind of want to, like, go away from Dellinger and maybe go with Rivers, Washington, or Jones. I think Washington we also know as normal dev. But Rivers, uh, 21 years old. He's not the most athletic, but maybe a little hefty, but can kind of play two different positions. We also have Darius Washington, who I think can play all over the place there. And then Emery Jones, who's definitely built to play tackle. Even though I don't think Rivers is really fit to play guard... Even though he's listed at guard, I think I'm going to grab him because he can play guard, tackle, probably not center, but either of those. Normal dad, but super strong. He'll be uh, potentially new left guard. I'm not sure. And we're going to go with another edge rusher just to add that depth. Josiah Stewart is going to be our choice. 84 speed, 86 excel. Once again, weirdly enough, thought he was going to be slower than Uman Mielin, but, uh, you know, I guess not. Go to 23 in the sixth round. Anyone there will take maybe an off ball if uh, there is one. Cam Ward maybe should have went QB, actually. Just get some depth there as well. Green's there, and then we have two really fast linebackers in Martin jo uh, Jackson. I think Jackson's significantly faster, though, so you know. Oh, maybe he's not. 4-4-3 four, four, with a great versus oh, 20 years old, though. Oh, he was faster. But yeah, Devon Jackson could even be a starter because I love the speed. Looks like a sleeper in my book. And then we move on to the seventh round. Don't think there's going to be any quarterbacks there, but if there is, maybe it's worthy taking one. Looking at Green. Okay, Nylon Green is still there. I'm pretty sure he's decent. Nylon Green, new cornerback three. And then the final draft pick. Even if they're all the good quarterbacks are gone, I might still take one just to have depth because I still don't know what I'm going to do with Geno yet. I think you give them a fight in preseason and whoever wins, wins the job, I think, is probably the best and only way to do this. And I'm going to go with uh, Jalen Milrow, who uh, has good throw power and some athleticism. Welcome to the squad. All right, let's take a look at that draft recap. I have no idea what that free safety looks like. And then, obviously, I, I guess I don't know what the tight end looks like either. I just, you know, seen that athleticism looked great. 20 years old. 76 overall. 70, 70, 68, 7, 67, 67, 68, 67. I mean, kind of the ratings I would expect for, you know, the rounds we had him at. But Mason Taylor, clearly uh, the best option at tight end one. I doubt we get anything for Fant. But if we can get something, I might offer the trade on and then... Uh, Go from there, 80, eh, let's do something, 84 is not much better to be honest, but whatever, Uman me, Ellen, um, you know, star dev, I would imagine, kind of raw, but hidden development trait, you know, that's good. Uh, some other options there that we've already seen in the past, maybe could have went with uh, Peyton, but I wanted the youth, got the youth, and then Vindeman, 
<laughs> He's going to be the new starting free safety. He's got a little bit of uh, man and zone coverage. Not the fastest guy, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of sucky that he's got his zone so far below the other archetypes, but we'll deal with it. And then, yeah, we're definitely looking a little raw on the offensive line, but we at least grabbed one. We got a uh, you know some depth in the offensive line now, I suppose, but yeah, definitely need to go hard in the free, uh, not maybe free agency, but in the next offseason for... Uh, for some linemen, without a doubt. Uh, and then Jackson. I don't even know what our linebacker situation looks like. Like, who do we keep? Would it be Baker and Dodson again? I kind of want to start Jackson because that potential's there. I might give him a start anyways. Maybe falling off of the realism a little bit and going for the Madden smartness route instead. All right, we're going to be rocking with the same playbooks. And uh, we're going to be rocking with this lineup. However, uh, preseason is going to be deciding who wins the starting job. Sam Howell and Gina Smith are similar overalls. Obviously, I'm rooting for Sam Howell because Gina Smith is not going to get another contract after this year. But if he plays really well, like he, I mean, he played pretty well last season, he deserves to be the starter still. So in a realism standpoint, Gino should start still or at least have the opportunity to start. In a Madden standpoint, it's not even close. Howell or Milrow should start without a doubt. O-line, we definitely need to replace the interior still. Wide receiver two, I think JSN will just move up the list. Uh, and then the rest is fine. Uh, assuming quarterback is fine in the future. And then defensively, man, Yellen is not the highest of overall, but he is hidden dead. Uh, Jackson's going to start as if he gets rookie of the year at 20 years old. He could be middle linebacker one after Baker's gone for the rest of this rebuild. Mafe, we're still going to give him a chance, 25 years old. Really needs a dev up, though. Safeties, I don't know if Thinneman is going to be the guy. And uh, Love is actually a pretty good overall, so we'll see there. Corners are great. DT1's great. The rest we do need to replace, probably. All right, we go two and one. Let's see who was the man in preseason. Number one against the Steelers, quarterbacking. Ooh, Sam Howell threw two picks, had one touchdown. Geno Smith, one touchdown, one pick, but also a third of the yards uh, and third of the attempts. Completion percentage was higher for Howell. That does mean something to me a little bit picks maybe a little more risky on both sides of the ball for uh you know the offense and the defense for you know the other team maybe uh getting more risky getting more picks i'm gonna call this a push honestly i know he has that one extra pick but completion percentage was higher and more importantly he had three times the attempts so obviously three times the yards not three times the picks though and then the second game let's see what happens here Ooh, another interception. But once again, completion percentage, 12% higher than Geno Smith. That is a lot higher. Uh, I will say, though, you know, no touchdowns with that pick does kind of suck. It does kind of suck. But yardage-wise, yards per attempt-wise was higher as well. So I would give it to, you know, 1-2-1 one, 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 technically. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. Let's take a look at the final game. Uh, and, oh, Gino is, man, Sam Howell did not do himself any favors here. I would say it was pretty close with a slight edge to Howell, and then Howell threw two interceptions and had a 58% completion percentage. Gino, however, 62% isn't much higher. Man, I really don't know. I think Gino is slightly better. I really do, but Sam Howell, if he's ever going to start, I mean, I guess, I, I guess Gino's going to get another season unless he struggles really early. We all know it. The smart thing to do would be to start Sam Howell if he has a chance. The younger he starts, the better it is. But realism states, Gino Smith will be the star. And there he is, Thinneman. <laughs> Thinneman uh, is going to be the guy. I'm going to learn his name and then I'll know. It might just be Thinneman. Yeah, I mean, it's Thinneman, but you could definitely hear the Mike Tyson coming out a little bit. Thinneman. Thinneman. So, I'm just going to call him Thinnaman. Am I saying Cinnamon? Am I saying Thinnaman? I don't know. I think either way, it sounds like I was stung by a bee. Unbelievable sell again! Mafe is not him, I don't think. We're having an okay season, but we also are not... Oh, yeah, Julian Love's gone. Uh, we are not having an okay cap room. I think Sam Howell might end up leaving without ever having a chance to... to shine, honestly. I think that might be the case, because... I can't pay him twenty million per. I'll do a one year twenty because Gino is going to be a hundred percent gone after the season, I believe, because of uh, contracts. But one year twenty outside of that, I can't do it. And even then, 
That's a lot of money for a guy that we haven't even started yet. And the season actually looked like it was going to have a pretty decent uh, finish to it, but the uh, second half of the year was terrible, and we ended up benching Gino. I have no idea how that went, but let's take a look at the uh, schedule. We are looking all right for a while, and uh, then we had a couple losses. We finally got that win back, and then we lost three in a row, and then we won two out of the last three, so... Yeah, not the uh, not the best season at all. Also, weird enough that we paid Sam Howell that one year 20 because we might end up just drafting a replacement right away anyways. Look at the numbers. Uh, you know, Sam Howell didn't really get to play much, but he technically did have a better touch on a pick ratio. Yards, 857. What's the yards per attempt? So, 0.5 higher. Yeah, I mean, we should have probably started Sam Howell over Gino, but what can you do? Uh, uh, Kenneth was pretty good again. Technically a down year. Tyler Lockett, though. Really good season. Metcalf was uh, pretty good. Taylor and, and Jigba, eh, not the best I've seen. Center was actually really good. Dowd was good enough for a dev up, though. Jackson, was it good enough for Rookie of the Year? I hope, but I don't know. Edge, not the best. Picks, I've seen worse. Myers, better than last year. Dixon, worse than last year, but it's still good because it's over 50 yards per punt. I'm really just hoping for Rookie of the Year on defense. That's all I can really pray for, and uh, we'll see if we get it. Uh, offense Rookie of the Year, number five. And defense rookie year, not even close. Number six. Uh, yeah, this was a really bad year. But at least contrary to last season, we did get a good draft pick. Plus, I think Tyler Lockett should dev up, which, I mean, at this point, it might be a little too late anyways. But at least it's better than not getting a dev up, assuming we get it. Ravens versus the Niners in the Super Bowl again. Wow, this has been a super riveting one. Uh, if the Ravens win again, it's like you might as well end the rebuild two in a row. Okay, I mean, the AFC is just... Absolutely killing it right now. Dev up, hopefully, for Lockett, which we do see. But once again, it, as expected, is too late. At best, he's number three. And the reason why I say at best is because I don't know what the contract situation is like. If this is actually supposed to be his technical last year, I might let him go. Because I know he's making a good amount of money. And even though he was good for us, the realism has to, uh, you know, coincide with the Madden. And uh, the Madden is telling me that uh, it might be time. And Mafe goes to a Dev. Once again, similar to uh, Tyler Lockett. Might be too late. It's a little different because he's 26, but at the same time, his ceiling might not even be where Tyler Lockett is right now, which is his floor. The rest of the team, uh, Thinneman, obviously star dev. We, I mean, we got some dev ups. We got some dev ups, all I can really say. We got dev ups, and we got a good draft pick. So we'll see what we can do with that. Obviously, Howell on that one year 20 is very good for him, but also very good for us because if we end up with a quarterback here... Yes, it's another expensive quarterback, but at least we're not locked in long term. Charles Cross, I think, uh, is probably better off just w waiting on him. Uh, and then Julian Love, man, I really just thought I was going to throw him to the ca uh, caution to the wind, throw him away. Don't know what I'm saying with the wind there, but uh, 85 overall, man. He is actually pretty decent. How much is... That's not what I want. LaVisca Chenault, sorry, buddy. Your talents have been wasted yet again on a new team. Yeah, I'm not paying 17 plus because that's what I had to pay to, to offer higher, especially if I want to lower the years. So, yeah, cap casualty, but more importantly, just not worth the value, in my opinion. I'm not paying top safety money for a guy that just isn't a top safety. 83 zone, 84 zone was that. That's just not worth it. Corner don't need. Tile, uh, well, Wyatt Teller kind of need, but eh. Safety, still need safeties. Lenure, that's an interesting name drop. Did not expect to see him in here. Zone? Zone coverage? Hmm. Very interesting. I would pay $13 million plus per year for him, who is also 85 plus. I mean, this could be interesting. What's that coverage looking like? So, man, isn't very good. Press is all right. Block shed sucks, but as a deep middle of the field safety, why not? Am I crazy? Am I crazy? Do we just go with Lanyon? And, uh, I mean, how much is this per? I might just do the five-year deal. Nah, it's risky because you don't know if you're going to get the dev up. Four-year 52. Let's see if we can get them. This would be a new move. Ooh, the Rams of all teams, too. Okay, I am bid warren. I do not want to lose them. 14 and a half. I mean, even that's lower than what we were going to have to pay. Still not enough. Oh, lordy. This is an expensive one. Four year 60, is that going to put us in the conversation? It still will not put us in the conversation. Wow. Okay, I mean, 16 million per, but he is higher potential. Okay, I mean, that's the highest I'm going to go, and that's the highest we need to go. Everyone else, sweat and interesting, but I think you'd rather just go Mafe at that point. Mafe's not too far behind him. 
and the rest. I mean, there are some names, but they're a little costly. Even the safety that we're technically corner going for is a bit of money. So I don't think we can physically afford anyone else right now, even if we wanted to. Although we are about to get a lot of money back because I'm about to release Gino for no loss. Because right now, technically, it's a year behind, but he would technically be gone already without a resigning anyways. And we did end up winning the auction. Uh, that sounds really <laughs> sauce as hell, uh, but it is a bid, I mean, oof. And we are the winners. Uh, oh, he's actually almost another level up, but he's already 87 overall by just going to free safety. Yeah, I mean, this is an, uh, you know one of those corner to safety uh, transitions that I think is going to pay off big time. Here we are entering the draft with pick 12 overall. The Broncos with number one. Didn't they have just picked two last year? Big B was, uh, or Big B was actually really good. Might even be generational. Didn't obviously throw him on my list because there was no chance we were going to get him. Ooh. I did not think there was going to be top five projected players here. 6'6", 21 years old. Oh, his strength is low. Is he a liar? The, the game sometimes knows things. Oh, it's four. I might have to pass on a top five projected player because I believe a lie has been committed. And obviously, this guy being 23 means that I will not be taking the chance there. What about Johnson? Raphael Johnson, 21 years old. Yeah, I didn't really go super high. I completely forgot that we actually have a really high draft pick. I don't know how I just forgot, but I did. It's funny because it's the first thing I looked at. And yet, somehow, I still forgot and thought we were like in the 20s. So my whole draft class looks like something in the 20s. Quarterbacks look really bad, right? Like the best I have is probably Morris, and he's 23, I believe. So it's like, do you really go 23, especially a 2-3? to three? I'd probably rather take a chance on one of the later guys I have. Buckner, who's a UDFA. Dunn or Reiner, both UDFAs. Day threes, though, so you never know. Maybe you get lucky. But honestly, I might have to take another gander at the edge position, outside linebacker specifically, because... Yeah, I didn't expect it. I just forgot about the draft pick. I forgot where we were in life. And there's nothing to miss on because they're all gone anyway. So it's down to basically... And I didn't scout this guy because... Uh, I actually don't know why. I really... I actually genuinely don't know why. So I either take a chance with Person, who is slow, in our 3-4 defense... Or I trade down. I think those are the options. I'm, I'm trading down. I don't trust that guy. I, I don't like the speed at all. I just don't. I think he's going to be a bust. And the fact that he's still here at top five, as a top five, just it worries me even more. I'd like to get to something around 20 if possible. And I'd prefer to get a second this year. But I'm willing to just take our best available offer. It's crazy that we're losing so much on this trade. Because the draft picks alone should have been one-to-one -one easy. But uh, I end up throwing in those players that shouldn't even be on the team anyways. I believe they're all on one-year deals, which means technically they're on zero-year deals because we're supposed to be a year in the future. Um, but with that, uh, we end up trading down to 20. The Steelers get their pick, which they actually traded up, I believe, for that edge rusher, unless it was the other one. Either way, it was one of the two top edge rushers. If they ended up landing a good player there, and it was not. Person is still there. That's crazy. Johnson, um, why didn't I just take this guy anyways? A finesse. I mean, I would definitely feel like he's a little safer than the other guys that we looked at just because of the uh, the speed alone. I do like Brewer as well. O-line's a problem. We added that extra second round pick, so we have a little more luxury than before. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why I wouldn't take this uh, Raphael Johnson. He fits the, the bill pretty well, too. 20, you know, one years old, 6'5". A finesse. He's fast. Welcome to the squad. And he's hidden. I really don't know why he's there. Maybe that other guy actually isn't bad at all. I really want to see. But that's not going to be something I see on our roster, unfortunately. Pick 12 might be a D lineman because we need a new D end. Uh, all the quarterbacks are still kind of there-ish. Maybe Perillo. You take the risk on. I think Perillo might be hidden dev. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give Howell a chance. He's being all that money anyways. Also thinking about future proof in the wide receiver position because I really like Brewer a lot. And not even future-proofing. Once again, I forgot to actually look at Lockett to see if he should even be here still. I'm going to do that real quick. And if he's supposed to be here another year, I think no matter what, I might just take Brewer. But if not, I'm kind of thinking about one of these D linemen. Because outside of these two to three guys, they're all nose tackles. Everyone else kind of sucks. But I do want an off-ball as well. Yeah, so we're about to save a lot of money. Because technically, Geno's supposed to be gone. And technically, Lockett's supposed to be gone. So Brewer's going to be the new wide receiver too, I think. With JSN being the number three again. 
Sucks is Lockett was actually pretty damn good for us, but realistically, if I'm going to get rid of him, I got to get rid of him for nothing because he's not supposed to be here, and that would be free trade value for nothing. But uh, it'll save us a lot of money at least, and uh, he'll go somewhere else where maybe they'll actually care about him a little longer than we did, especially after a year he just had. But it's a money league. So with that little move set we did, we're going to be going for the wide receiver Bruce Brewer, who looks... I think pretty good, and he actually looks really athletic. 6'5", 21 years old. Welcome to the team. Ooh, normal dev. That kind of sucks. I was expecting uh, hidden dev. He looked like one of those hidden dev types, but unfortunately not going to be the case. And then once again, we're going to slow down here and take the f remaining of those three DNs, which, I mean, considering it's Bears back-to-back, -back, I highly doubt they're going to take back-to-back. -back. And they don't. They take QB, and we are with the choice of whatever one we want. Probably going to go with whoever is the highest strength slash speed. Oh, we also have Fulton here, one to two. I worry about that, though. It worked out for us in this draft already with our hidden dev uh, pass rusher, but Hargrove, who looks really hard to beat. Age might be beatable, though. Not from Buchanan, though. Not bad either from Buchanan. I genuinely don't know who to take. They're all really solid looking. I think for what we need, though, Buchanan or Hargrove would be better. Because we need someone a little bit bigger. I want to move Byron inside. 478 with a 38 versus, I believe, 36. Yeah, I think uh, I think Hargrove wins this, right? I don't think it's even particularly close either. I mean, it's close. I don't know what I'm saying there. But what about Fulton? One last look. Yeah, I think uh, I think Hargrove is the best. So Eli Hargrove is going to be the choice. Normal dev. I had four choices. The odds of all of them being normal is very low so we probably just messed up but what can you do can't win them all two normals in a row a little disappointing ironically the two guys i knew the most uh, also who's this guy i didn't scout corners so we just don't need him but 23 years old he's probably really good elite speed as well but i think with this pick we're gonna be taking an offensive lineman really want multiple linemen but i don't think that's gonna happen oh maybe in the the next round we go morse and we actually got Lindsay this round i think we go Lindsay this round, and then Morse in the next round. Boom. Thank God he's hidden. Thank God. Need a linebacker as well, though. I'm going to see if we can make these plays. I'm not sure, because it's going to cost. We can trade from 12 in the fourth round to move into the higher pick fourth round to get the other lineman if he's there. And then we trade up for the final remaining linebacker, which would be probably Bolton. I don't know. York, Chauncey. Okay, so we have actually do have a lot of options. Okay, we're, we're okay, I think. Just hope they don't take, you know, they don't go and worst case scenario, we pass on the lineman and use pick 12 to uh, to get a linebacker. There's one linebacker. We end up trading a third and a fifth next year with a sixth this year and our guard that was drafted in real life actually for this pick from the Bills, which you're taking a risk that we are uh, good uh, and I don't, I don't know if they have that much of a risk because we have been really inconsistent and mainly on the bad side. But yeah, I think... We're going to end up trading up for that player, which that player is going to be Mr. Blair Leonard. 21 years old, 6'4", really fast, good block shed. Could be normal. I don't mind, but we don't have the mind because he's hidden dev. No real change of direction, but yeah, he is a very good player. And we're going to move on to the next round. Maybe that seventh round is enough to grab the lineman, assuming he's there. And I think we could, uh, you know, we've recouped a little bit in this draft. Oh, we do want a, a quarterback, though, don't we? We go to the sixth round and take a quarterback, maybe? I like Dickinson. That's You slow that down a little bit, and that's a weird thing to like, I'll tell you that much. But let's go to the Broncos with that seventh-round pick, maybe trade into the second, the sixth round and grab a quarterback. But even if we don't get a quarterback, I mean, this might not even be the year for us anyways. As we have Howell. Maybe Howell's the guy. There we go. I mean, we're going to take the lineman, go to the sixth round, see if there's options. If not, oh well, I like our draft. See what we get for this lineman. Please be hidden. If he's hidden, I think we did a really good job of uh, getting lineman last second. Scott Dickinson, and he is hidden. Nice. So the interior line kind of saved if you move everyone over. Yo, hold up. These quarterbacks, I have to trade up for one of them. I don't think Buckner's as good, but that's crazy to say because look at the the athleticism. But look at Dunn and Reiner. These guys are sleepers. Elite throw power. He's athletic. And then you look at Reiner, and he's super athletic with elite throw power. I'm going to trade up once we're down to either Dunn or Reiner. 
I think uh, Dunn would probably be the guy I want more slightly. But yeah, we're going to keep going, and uh, we might land ourselves a sneaky hidden dev quarterback. So we have to look at all those DNs, and we have to look at all these quarterbacks and see where uh, potential mistakes were made. Assuming, you know, we even get the trade-up for the quarterback, and assuming we made the wrong choice, we might actually we might actually redeem ourselves a little bit here. Uh, Buckner obviously went, and uh, this is costing us less and less as these picks go along. We're really killing our next draft, but I mean, I have to get one of these quarterbacks. They look really insane. Had uh, the national scouting on quarterbacks, though, because, once again, we still don't technically have our franchise quarterback. And I did say I wanted done more, but I think Reiner does make more sense. His potentials look better, and he is uh, a little bit faster. So Luke Reiner is the choice, normal dev. And I'm honestly really tempted to just go for done the quarterback, man. Is there, like, uh, what about the Broncos? They have two draft picks, assuming he's even there still. And he is. I, I mean, surely... They, A, don't even need a quarterback, and B, are willing to part with one of them for a, a reduced cost, if you will. It says they need QB, but I don't see why. We'll give them Milro. I mean, we might be just trading for another Milro here, but I am willing to take two new quarterbacks in a draft class. It was really weak at quarterback at the top, but maybe we land ourselves a sneaky player here with Terrell Dunn or Reiner, really, either of them. And both of them are normal, but we'll see. All right, let's take a look at the draft recap. We did land a couple of normal devs, which are definitely disappointing, but maybe the overalls are high, which they are. Brewers a 75 overall. Hargrove is a 73. The quarterbacks are both 70, uh, 69. That is intriguing. That is definitely interesting. Uh, Johnson, who I think, I'm not really sure. Does he start over Uman Mielin this year? And then depending on what Mafe does, if he doesn't get a contract, Uman Mielin starts again. That might be the, the move, honestly. Number 90, what's the dev? Oh, yes. He 100% starts. That is a good player. How did he fall then? He's a round one projected, which is usually like no later than like eight. And he fell to 20. I traded down. I, I That is one of our best draft moves ever. Honestly, like trading down from 12 to 20 and landing an X-Factor edge rusher still who was projected in round one, like the early round one is kind of crazy. Bruce Brewer... Very good catching, short routes, great. He's not a bad player at all. Has all the catching traits. Almost checked his dev, but we don't need to check. We know it. Hargrove is going to start over Draymond Jones, I think. Hopefully Draymond can just be released because he's a very expensive player. Hasn't really shown much to us either. Then we move on to the right guard, Lindsay, who I think might just stick it out at right guard. The uh, high pass blocking right guard. Uh, dev, star dev. Okay, fair enough. Maybe the center's uh, superstar. Who knows? Leonard was in dev he's automatic starter right behind baker i think jackson kind of broke my heart a little bit i really thought he was in develop didn't makes it an easier decision this year though because leonard's obviously the number two middle linebacker now dev star dev was kind of hoping maybe for superstar didn't get it dickinson let's take a look at him why not i think the guy that'll be moving over is haynes will be left guard i think that'll be the move scott dickinson star dev Kind of low overall, but, uh, you know, 73-73 is not bad. Uh, and then we look at Reiner, the better of the two quarterbacks, I thought. 69-75, uh, 78, what's his average sense of pressure? So he's actually not a bad quarterback, just a little bit raw in the ratings. And then Dunn, who we traded up for as well, is trigger-happy sense of pressure. A little more accurate, though. So, I don't know. Do we have a quarterback carousel? I, I don't know what's going on. Do we have a competition anyways? I, I'm not really sure what we're going to do there. Moment of truth, though. Let's take a look at the DN we passed on. It's impossible for him to be better than our guy. 75 overall, normal dev. Not bad by any means. I would not have been mad with this player, assuming the guy we grabbed didn't exist, because then I'd be really mad that I didn't take that guy. But cooked up for us. We are happy with our choice. Then we move on to the next round, where there was like a billion DNs. I don't even know if anyone took one besides us. Oh, there's one. 73 overall, Reed. Also normal dev. Okay. Similar to our guy. I think our guy might have been slightly better because his power move was like two better. So not much going on there, but technically better. Fulton, 71 overall. Ooh, normal dev. A little bit better power move, but yeah, he was even worse than those two other uh, guys, one of them being drafted by us. Sasser, I don't even know if that guy was on our list. Third round, there was definitely one more. It wasn't Saunders. Who was it? Was it one more? Maybe it wasn't one more. If it was one... Oh, there he is. He went all the way at the end of the third. And, of course, he's the one that's hidden. A whole round after our guy. He looks exactly like our guy. The difference is this guy's hidden. 
and start up. Okay, I mean, I could live with it. Was there anyone else, the quarterbacks? We actually drafted them all, so there's not really much to look at. I guess we'll look at Buckner. Buckner, I think, will be the guy we look at. He was late sixth, right? There he is, six, seven overall. And, yeah, I mean, you can't tell me the AI doesn't know something, even though they pass on the X Factor we drafted. Because, like, why would he go above the other guys? Star Dev. Curious to see the rest of the class, though, because, I mean, at least the quarterbacks, because it looked like a weak class. Uh, 218. Pick five overall. The Browns took Oakley, who was normal, but very, very good accuracy-wise. Is it just the Dev that was dropping their, like, potentials? Perillo, was he hidden? He was hidden, so, I mean, I did kind of think he was going to be the guy of all of them that was going to be good. See what that dev is. Probably just star, but maybe superstar. You never know. Only star. Definitely a pretty bad draft class for quarterbacks, but their base ratings aren't too bad. Their potential might kind of suck, but their base ratings aren't the worst. Lo Rubio, I don't think he was on my list. Rivers was, though. Mac Rivers, normal dev. Pretty accurate, though, obviously. And then we look at the final player, which was the 23-year-old Morris. Six round in the, uh, pick six in the second round. Very high short route. Decent medium. Iffy deep, but also hidden dev. He is 23, but he's hidden dev. He's dev star. The season three team is definitely looking a little different as the quarterback position is now filled with just complete youth, which I think is also going to be potentially tested in preseason. It's one of those situations where Howell is very firmly as the starting quarterback, but if Reiner and or Dunn completely outplay Howell in preseason, I think it's enough to uh, to revert that, but obviously if it's close, then obviously Howell will be the guy. Brewer will be the number two wide receiver, Hopefully get him a dev up right away, and then, you know, he'll go up to star, maybe superstar, who knows. Uh, and then, of course, you got a couple of youngster uh, linebackers now. Johnson, the X-Factor, and Leonard, the uh, the star with some speed. Uh, defensive line, Hargrove, another guy that, you know, rookie of the year, kind of dev up situations. Could easily make him one of the better players on the team, despite starting from such a low base points. But, yeah, really looking forward. Right end might need to be, need to be replaced. Middle linebacker, more than likely. Left guard, probably. Quarterback, we'll see. But other than that, the team is actually looking pretty good, potential-wise. All right, look at the numbers. Howell, not a great game, but not a bad game. He just, uh, you know, didn't really play. Reiner was actually really good. Completion percentage was terrible, though. And then uh, Dunn didn't really play. Then we look at game two against the Chargers. Uh, Reiner, a little bit worse, but completion percentage is up there. Dunn still didn't play. And then Howell, 69% completion percentage. Playing a very safe game, but still uh, in the lead with that. And then the third game, Dunn still didn't play. I love that for us. And Howell has cemented himself as the starter. And that really didn't take too long at all. Eli Hargrove is going to be a star dev. How many times have I called him Hargrave this, uh, this rebuild so far? Probably a lot. And he's only a rookie. We have a billion dollars, but we have a lot of players to re-sign. Obviously, the first three you see will be re-signed. Cross will also be on the list. Abraham probably gets that two-year. Mafe will have to see how he's playing. Sam Howell's playing pretty well right now, so I think think he's a little bit... It's a weird one. I'd rather say something like a three-year 65, which even that is, like, really low, but for what he's asking for... Oh, he's not going to take it. Okay, a three-year 70, something like that. Uh, I don't want to sign him to a super long-term deal, but at the same time, he'll be set for life if he takes one of these contracts. He already is with that one-year 20 we gave him, to be fair, but still. Holy shit, this is a choke. Absolutely unbelievable. We were at one point seven and four. I don't know why this Seahawks team is cursed. It just is. Look at the losses. Loss, 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 loss. Unbelievable. And then we went against the Colts just to make our draft pick worse. Because why not? Why not? Unbelievable season. Just a bad season. I'm glad I paid Sam Howell, too, because he was looking really good. He was like 15 touchdowns, four interceptions. Paid him a four-year 88, and I, this is what I get. This is the crap I get. Walker was great, though. Receivers were terrible. Taylor, at least, maybe has himself a chance at a dev up. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Sack total sucked. I mean, this... Oh, my God. Myers was ass. This season blew. Unless your name was Walker or Taylor. Somehow, offensive rookie of the year, though. 
Okay, maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Brewer go up and dev. That's about it. The Ravens and the Eagles in the Super Bowl. And the Eagles win. We have a lot of money still despite paying literally everyone other than like Baker. Uh, dev ups. Howell didn't go up and dev, which is super great. Taylor went up and dev. Brewer went up and dev. Defensively, any dev ups? Uh, Hargrove already had that. And I believe that was it. Gave Mafe the three year because it's crazy. I didn't even really think about it till just now. It really was a choke. He had five sacks by week 12. And he put up a half the rest of the year. I was projecting double digits. Didn't even come close. That is absurd. I don't know what's wrong with this game. I genuinely don't. But team still is progressing. And uh, yeah, I mean, let's go into another season. All right, fifth year option to Vaughn Witherspoon. Might actually be worth it. Devin Witherspoon is going to be the guy that gets the fifth-year option, I think. He's a red interest right now. He's already a 92 overall. I think we're going to spend it. JSN, absolutely not. That costs more than he's even going to be getting. He's a slot receiver. He's getting no more than 18 mil per year from me. Baker, not bad, but we can do better for cheaper. Uh, well, maybe not right now, but, you know, like a year from now, better for cheaper. Williams also a little expensive, so... We've got some things to draft. We also have a lot of money, so if there's even a couple of free agents in there, we can maybe fill those with younger names. We'll see... Let's go to free agency, see if the, any of that actually exists. Speaking of, still can't believe we didn't make the playoffs with, I mean, a pretty decent team, right? I felt like it was a pretty, I guess our quarterback's still pretty low. Maybe that's just the big reason. Deron Bland, interesting name drop. Yeah, everyone's really old. They're like 30 plus years old, and that is enough for me to be like, no thank you. So, uh, see you later. Maybe Brandon Sheriff on like a one-year deal. I don't really want to spend a lot of money. The locket's still going strong, by the way. I'll do a one-year 11. If he, or a one-year 10. If he's willing to do a one-year 10, he can join. If not, I'm going to rock with what we got and then maybe draft new players anyways. We have pick 16 in the draft. And i got to say, this is actually probably the weakest draft class I've seen in a long time. Maybe 20, 30 drafts. It's really not filled. I mean, this is what I've got. And we have other position needs, or not even just position needs, but a good amount of positional needs... I mean, it might end up resulting in us drafting players that we don't even need, like Greg Terry, maybe. Um, but really need a defensive lineman, and realistically, the best one is probably Jenkins. I suppose Adams isn't too bad either, but Philip Jenkins, really strong. You know, he's got a you know B power move, B block shed, A tackle. You have the same guy here with Adams, who is younger, but he's also weaker. I think, I mean, there's a pretty good lineman here too, but uh, we don't really even need that many linemen. I think I'm going to trade down them. I think I'm going to go to, uh, honest, without a third round pick, honestly, do I just go to like late first here? 32 maybe? 29? That's a pretty good trade. The Panthers are giving me the trade I'm looking for. I'm going to move to the next pick. If Jenkins is somehow there, I think I'd take him. But, uh, you know, two to three Adams, I think I'd be willing to take here as well. Get that fifth year option potentially. And let us see it. Oh, Jenkins is still there. I got to go Jenkins. Philip Jenkins, 22 years old. Head and dev. There you go. 93 strength. Decent athleticism at 6'6", 309. Might be able to move uh, Byron Murphy inside now as well. Let's move on to the next pick. Do I go with a corner I don't need yet? We also added that that second round pick, which basically is a third round pick. Of course, you have a quarterback here. Have uh, interior lineman scouted this uh Draft cycle instead of... Oh, Adams is there too. We only need one lineman though, right? Yeah, we only need one. So I think we're actually chilling there. Quarterbacks don't actually know. A to C man coverage, 21. He is really solid looking. If that's a C man coverage, he's still a good zone coverage guy. So I'm going to take a chance. And he's hit and dev. Okay, if that was a good draft pick. Future proven without even trying. And I think the plan here is just to take the best available. Who is this? Who is this uh, one to two tight end? He actually looks all right, but don't need a tight end. Uh, Adams is still there, which is, uh, I mean, I guess not crazy, but it's still surprising. But the plan is to take whoever I think is the best of these three linemen, which I will have to look at because Tatum looks the best, but I don't know for sure. And then take Tom Isaac to start the fourth. We trade up in the fourth, I think. I think that's a good plan. I personally like this plan. And yeah, there was an argument to be made about Gregory being you know, better than Tatum, but Tatum with the size has more versatility. So Terrell Tatum, Hidden Dev. It's been a little while since we've, you know, kind of missed on uh, Hidden Lineman. So 
Let's uh, let's keep that going. Adams goes to the Eagles. Definitely curious, but not like, oh my god, I wonder what he was because we just sold. Type of he curious, you know. And Tom Isaac is there, so let's trade up with the Saints and kind of call it a draft. Maybe we'll grab like some random positions in between, but as far as like the guys that I think can really be something. It took a seventh round pick this year and uh, two years from now to uh, make that 16 spot trade up. Tom Isaac going to be our choice, and he is hidden. Another one of those day threes that I, I don't know what it is, why they're so low of a uh, projection, but they're easy as day to see, especially if you uh, national focus the inside line. Here we go with the draft recap. Oh, 277 overalls. Okay. O-line, 73, 72. They're always pretty low unless you take them really, really high. Phillip Jenkins, though. Uh, very good block shedding. Decent power move. Tackles up there. Strength is obviously super high. Uh, swim move, bull rush. Not bad, actually. Going to be the uh, starting nose tackle, I believe, as uh, I want to move Byron inside. And superstar dev. Okay, that is a very good draft pick, especially with the trade down, which gave us the, uh, the lineman. Uh, Pierce, 81 man coverage. We have options now, although ironically enough, if there was any corner on this team we would be looking to replace, it would be Tyreek Woolen, technically, or Tariq Woolen, or Reek Woolen, uh, but we just gave him a three or four year deal anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant. And then speaking of these offensive linemen, I'm not saying they're irrelevant, but considering only one of them might have a chance to start, I don't really care too much about the devs. We're just going to start whoever uh, looks better, which I guess, whatever, we'll take a look. Uh, Tatum, I just, you know, I try to cut corners because, you know, the video is pretty long already. It's a 10-year rebuild after all. Don't want to see the, uh, the devs of some linemen that are probably going to be star when I could just wait. And I did want to see Adams, who is also hidden in fairness. 21 years old, it'd be very hard, especially with those really low ratings, to surpass the guy we drafted. But, you never know. And no. And we're going to trade uh, Bradford to the Patriots for Penn, who's normal dev. They have two guys that are better than that in front of him. So other than depth, there's really not a reason to... Uh, well, Bentley's a little bit older, but it's not really a reason to uh, keep him. I mean, look how much depth they got for off-ball. Here we go, season four. Hoping Howell gets that dev up this year. Uh, Brewer's almost an 80 overall. He's obviously star dead. Offensive line is all, you know, really young. That's what we were looking for. Middle linebacker needs to be... Replaced, upgraded, uh, but really everyone else, it's really dev ups we're missing more than like anything. We're not really looking for new players. Overalls aren't even that bad, but dev ups, which will lead to higher overalls, is our biggest issue. Negotiation time, 100 mil. JSM, we knew about this. Charbonnet, we'll see because he actually isn't a bad backup. And Derek Hall's a nice backup too, but everyone else is basically backups we don't need to keep. Any future contracts? Taylor, okay. I mean, we've got money. We're not really too worried just yet. Oh, another really bad second half of the season. It's just basically a script at this point. 8-9. Oh, super fun. Super fun. Love it. Need to have a proven quarterback as well, apparently. Otherwise, you suck. I mean, look at how good we were. We were actually pretty good. And then we lost four in a row. Won one, lost one, won one, lost one. Nice. Guess it's going to be time to go to the... Oh, maybe not. This Bengals scheme actually did cook. Howell should be a dev up guy. Uh, JS said, maybe X-Factor, probably not, but the pick, the touchdowns have a chance. Metcalf was pretty good, Brewer was pretty good, Taylor was pretty good. Blocking, uh, we've had worse. Uh, looking at the defense, we've definitely had better. Philip Jenkins was great, though. I'm not sure what it's going to take to ever get a 3-4 defense to do well, but, uh, at least Phillips is good. Philip Jenkins, I mixed his, uh, S at the end of his name and the Philip in the front. Yearly awards outside of maybe Rookie of the Year. I don't see it. Philip Jenkins, and uh, that's about it. Cowboys versus Chiefs in the Super Bowl. A super fun, riveting game that everyone would have somebody to root for, clearly. And the Chiefs win. Let's take a look at the dev ups, if we had any. Howell didn't go up in dev after a season like, okay, I'm going to force that. JSN went up in dev, but I'm forcing that. That is ridiculous. That is so stupid. Such a stupid game sometimes, I swear. If he, draw, if he sucks really badly next season, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll drop his dead, but that's a dev up season. It's not even going to matter, but, like, where is this not star dev? Show me where. That is a ridiculously good season. That is a dev up season. That's stupid not to be. Uh, defensively, uh, Jenkins goes, no, he's already was superstar, actually. No dev ups. Technically, none. Literally none. Because, you know, we had to force uh, Howell. Which I'm not... I don't care. I, I don't really care. 
I gotta say, Jenkins just got some insane upgrades, by the way. Three upgrades, you got five power move, three block shed, and then the rest. That's pretty damn good. All right, we took care of all of our re-signings. Who is in free agents? Oh, Tyler Smith. I mean, that is a really good young offensive lineman, but that is a lot of money. Although it is only a two-year deal. You could maybe, uh, you know, get him to, to like the location. And he sticks around after. I mean, that's a really high overall lineman. I think I have no choice. Just the pure value alone. Especially since, technically, we don't really need much more outside of that. I mean, really, just a linebacker. Which, obviously, we can't really do anything about anyways. Because there's none here. Doubt we get him, but I, I mean, I feel like it was worth putting him on the list. He ends up signing a two-year 40 when we offered him, what was it, a two-year 52? Makes sense. Actually, it was more than that, wasn't it? Math is hard. We still paid him a six mil more, so that's all that matters. All right, I haven't really thought of edge rusher as a big positional need, but considering we have nobody doing anything, oh, that's a really good running back here, too. We looked at Beekman. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, you're not seeing the speed there uh, because it's not there, but he has some really good attributes. I can't do it, though. I don't need a running back. Um, but Warren Bruce, you got a really good tight end there. Don't need that. You know, we are in a really good position right now. Quarterback, maybe you can go with that. But I think edge. Uh, you know, we really haven't had anyone emerge. And more importantly, Mafe is not the youngest anymore. Do you go with a guy like Alfonso Franklin? Really solid. Or do you with Creighton, who I also scouted further who has an A power move as well, B tackle. He's a little older, a little bit slower, and a little bit already made my mind up. Alfonso Franklin, I've seen these guys go all the way up to 18. We're at 14. I'm not taking the risk, and maybe I should have. Ooh, yikes. All right, the Colts are going to be one of my favorite types of trades where we trade a mid to high round pick for a same round, a way later pick that ends up giving us an extra one for the next round, which, uh, of course, I think I'm going to be using this pick on a linebacker, unless there's a a better best available type player, which I'm not really seeing. Haggerty looks pretty damn good. Parker looks pretty damn good. We obviously scouted uh, the off or the middle linebacker position itself this uh, draft, so we know quite a bit about those. So I'm going to have to decide on who I want, but we have a lot of options. And I think Haggerty is the best option. Uh, he is young. He's decently fast. The other guys aren't really even that fast either. But Haggerty's my man's. And he's hidden dev. Okay, I mean, I was kind of expecting to have to grab two linebackers. As usually we land a hidden uh, normal. But this time we actually did all right for ourselves. Let's see what we want to do with this pick. Maybe another linebacker anyways. Uh, we have some linemen we don't really know a whole lot about. I might actually take another linebacker. I can't remember who is the 21-year-old. Is it Murray? Murray's 21. He's pretty fast, actually, so we're going to go with Kendall Murray. And he's in dev into the next round, which I think... I really like Lily. Do I go with another linebacker? I'm doing it. The value's there. And it's another hidden one. I don't need these guys. I literally need, like, one. And I got three. I mean, when you hit the well... Why not keep sipping? I don't know. We trade up with a sixth round pick. The seventh round wasn't good enough, even though it was a decently high seventh round pick. I had two choices. My uh, later one or earlier one went with the earlier one. Still wasn't enough, but not really too pushed about it. We are, I believe, going to go with the nose tackle, uh, Mr. James Mack. Once again, future proofing because the team's in a really good spot. And another hidden depth. The one player that wasn't hidden was the one guy I wanted hidden. I guess besides all of the linebackers, but... Yeah, pass rusher was definitely up there for us. I'm going to take this Farley guy. I don't even really need a pass rusher too much, but I guess the value is there. Normal dev, yeah, I mean, sooner or later. Sooner or later. I would love to have one of those running backs, but we did pay Charbonnet a two-year 10, so, I mean, technically we don't even need one. Here we go, draft recap. I ended up trading down our fifth-round pick for a next-year pick, and then we got a bunch of seventh-round picks, which all of them were kind of mid. They weren't really that great. Uh, 74 overall for Franklin, who I think honestly might just start because he at least has a high ceiling. And Mafe, I mean, he just really hasn't done anything. The linebackers, though, really good. Like, really good. I don't know who's got what dev, but I guess we'll take a look now. I think Haggerty starts because he was the highest draft pick of, at the linebacker spot. Uh, oh, yeah, he starts. Oh, yeah, 100% starts. X-Factor linebacker. Okay, so we literally... Could have stopped right where we were there, and it would have been a-okay. Would have been fine. 
I suspect these guys are going to be trade fodder at some point in the next few years. Start of there. Yeah, that's kind of absurd. We really, I mean, we got that one linebacker, and we were done. We didn't need any of these guys, but we kept on going on, which, I mean, I don't hate because the value is there. Oh, especially for Lily, Superstar. So an X-Factor Superstar, we got one of every dev except for normal, which is good. That's nice to have. Mac, could he be one of those Superstar types? Sure. Looks a little raw, but we did have one that was kind of raw looking that was Superstar before. Not going to be this time, though, unfortunately. And everyone else, like I said, not really that good. It is year five, and uh, we really haven't made the playoffs consistently. This could, uh, I'm not saying this is the same how as last season, but if he doesn't earn his dev up and he actually regresses, then we will be looking at quarterback. But he had a good year last year, so we're going to be optimistic about it. Uh, the receivers are amazing, running backs amazing. Defensively, uh, you know, we're hoping Franklin gets a dev up or two. He has a really good year, and maybe we'll have ourselves. A really good uh, edge duo. But once again, I'm not really sure how even uh, Mafe and Johnson weren't able to put up decent numbers. But something has to give. Got to go with a new edge rusher. Sorry, Mafe. It's just the way it is. You know, a half a sack in seven or eight games is horrendous. Really need to have up for Woolen and Lenore as well. But these things have been really rare to find. This looks like it's going to be another Mafe situation, huh? Failed scenario. Super fun. Another losing streak. Witherspoon, yes. Taylor, yes. Thinnaman, yes. Uh, Byron, likely. Yuman Mielin, probably because of the value of uh, you know how cheap the contract is compared to what he can bring. Lucas, probably not. And everyone else is kind of backup level. Any other names going forward? Johnson, for sure, but... We have the money, we just don't have the wins. If we win, maybe we're in. If we lose, it's another 8-9 season. Of course it is! Oh, I love this game! It's the best game you could ever play. Let's take a look at the win-loss. This time we actually finish a little bit better than we started, which is... I mean, it's something new, I suppose. I guess just every rebuild needs to finish with uh, the Chiefs playbook. I guess you can't win unless you're the Chiefs. Looking at the, uh, I mean, the numbers aren't bad, right? 30 touchdowns to two picks, 4,000 yards is really good. But we're just not scoring enough touchdowns, I don't think. Brewer, maybe good enough for a dev up with those touchdowns. O-line, really not our best year, one of our worst, actually. Pass rush, Franklin had two and a half. Hey, Johnson Cook, though, 11. Hargrave had an eight. Murphy with seven. Jenkins even had five. I mean, there was some positives, definitely some positives, but also a lot of negatives. And the biggest negative, though, comes from the fact that we just lose. I mean, really, just... I don't even think the numbers are that terrible. Haggerty doesn't even need Rookie of the Year, but... Best wide receiver because of the touchdowns. Okay, I mean, he's definitely going to get it up at some, for some reason, I would imagine. But yeah, very surprised that we were as bad as we were with numbers we had. I don't know. It's just... EA predicts uh, a team is going to be a certain way, and they will not let them do well. I actually, to be fair, now that I like kind of think back, I don't know if we've seen the Seahawks win a single Super Bowl this year. Have we? I really can't remember. Maybe like a few, but they are not a team that comes up often. I know that for a fact. Uh, Steelers versus the Cowboys. Those, I mean, specifically the Cowboys. You see that team a lot. I'll tell you that much. Can we just make the playoffs though? We're entering you, you know year six. Barely touching the playoffs. Uh, we see that the Steelers actually win. So there's that. Take a look at our team. See any retirements. All backups. All mentor type players. I don't even know why people join us when they know they're never going to win a ring. They, we came close. But how many times are we going to come close without actually making the playoffs? Let alone the Super Bowl. I don't know. Maybe the whole rest of the rebuild. DevOps. Brewer goes to Superstar. Great news. Howell didn't deserve a dev down. But just not good enough for a dev up either. As far as defense goes, Franklin doesn't go up in dev, which, I mean, I'm not saying it wastes him, but it definitely does not give him a good chance to be the guy, uh, you know, down the line. But uh, Reek Woolen, you know, his uh, lack of dev up also hurts. We go, we move on, season six. Fifth year option for Johnson. It's still probably cheaper just to wait, and then we took care of all the other contracts. But this is what I'm talking about, though, with, uh, you know, certain players just can't be started because Howell's not even playing that badly, but because he's now 27 years old, you almost argue replacing him because his ceiling seems to be maybe an 88 overall, and 
I'm not sure what's causing us to not win games, but you know, we did a speed rebuild, uh, you know, not so long ago with, with the Lions, I believe, where we literally couldn't win because Jared Goff was too low of an overall. We showed the same team. We bumped up the overall by like four, and it was like night and day. So there's just certain like threshold parameters rather than actual sim logic that really holds back the game and really holds back the sim situation in general. So there's certain things you almost have to abide by. Caleb Williams is a free agent. That's kind of crazy. Can't lie. Him. And we could afford him if we wanted him, but not going to do that. That's a, you know, it's kind of pushing it a little bit. Pass rushers, Bane is there and he only wants $10 million per. Is he just done nothing? And why is he a free agent anyways? And Chicago does not use them because he sucks. Like, he's a good player, but he's done, like, nothing. Also, did I skip too far and I can't get him? Oh, I just clicked the wrong thing, did I? Okay, fair enough. I mean, frankly, it was kind of ass. So, if I can get Bane on a five-year 65, why the hell wouldn't I? Oh, because other teams are offering. If I could do a four-year something, I might do it. And believe it or not, we actually got Bane on a two-year 40. Uh, you know, they seem seen like that is kind of the value we needed to offer. And, well, there you have it. I'm honestly half-tempted to just move to a freaking 4-3. We paid, like, Murphy, though, so... Like, rotational D-line. What is... I mean, Hargrove's freaking superstar as well. Ugh. It's tough, because these three fours just seem to suck, but, I mean, look at how good Byron Murphy is. I can't bench any of these players, right? Jenkins would be the one guy I could kind of bench. But I don't even think it's... You know, he's just not worth... It's not worth doing. Uh, I don't know. I guess you just keep it with a 3-4 that never produces. And Mafe is on a final year kind of situation here. So if we can get some value out of him before we lose him, why not? Don't even know if we need a safety, but I'll take that fourth and that seventh. And the safety depth need that more than the edge depth. We are pretty good on edge, right? We have Umami Allen for another three years. Johnson, we're looking to repay. Baines on the season, on the team for two more years. Franklin's on the team for three more years. Safety, on the other hand, we don't really have good backups, so or any backups, really, for that matter. So, uh, yeah, might even be the starter after this season. When Lenore is gone, I doubt we repay him. So, yeah, I mean, I don't hate that. I, I like the uh, the decisions here. As far as the draft goes, I mean, more alignment, I guess, because they're not really developing. But outside of that, or a quarterback, we don't really need much. We just need to win games, which we haven't done. All right, entering the draft here with pick 14 uh, and you know, another really high draft pick for a team that really doesn't seem like it deserves it. There's a couple of decent quarterbacks there. I don't know if any of them are even going to still be there, and they are not. We have Braxton Jenkins, who I'll end up probably taking just default, not having much else to grab, and quarterback's been so iffy for us development-wise that maybe we just want someone newer. You know, If Howell needs a contract like this next season, which I can't remember when we did it, can I really say that I want to keep him? I don't know. Can I say I can release him right now? Definitely not. So having other options would at least open up the possibility to, you know, maybe a higher dev chance. But I will say, uh, as far as this specific draft goes, there's not many needs we have. But corner, I guess, kind of coming up a little bit. The guy looks great. I'm going to take McDougal. He just looks really good. 1-2, to two, pick 14. I didn't want to trade down because I just feel like... Personally, I don't even know if we're going to get that quarterback, but realistically, it's not like the biggest push comes to shove situation. But personally, I've seen those guys go all the way up to 18, like I said. So realistically, you know, if I find that the guy's really good, really worth it, I'm going to take them. And speaking of, Vaughn looks really good here. If the quarterback's gone, that's who I'm taking. Quarterback's there. So one little quick look over. It's going to be the quarterback, Braxton Jenkins. If he's normal dad, I cry, but I have a feeling star. I had a feeling, also had a feeling, nah, actually that speed makes sense, but I had a feeling star, maybe he's even superstar, who knows, do I trade up for that tight end, we don't even need a tight end, but like, why not just have the best possible team out there, you know, yeah, I was gonna make a trade up, and we could have done it, but it would have costed us so much, I'd rather just go for maybe, let's see, even, even if the tight end's there, but uh, I'd rather go for some linemen I instead, uh, you know, that's probably a future position we need more than tight end anyways, Although I will say the linemen are looking a little iffy. I think Smiley, as much as I know, is going to be the guy. I ended up scouting wide receiver further this one because I felt like 
Oh, normal dev. That sucks. I feel it felt like um, you know wide receiver is kind of one of the more aging prospects on this team. So I was like, eh, I'll go for wide receiver. Why not? Didn't really work out that way. Uh, speaking of wide receiver, I think it's going to be McLean because he has one of those weird builds. So Mr. John McLean kind of reminded me of uh, Die Hard. This guy's probably going to be superstar dev. Minus two devs. Even though this guy's 23, he looks really fast. I'm going to take him. Jeremy Hall, why not? Because he's normal. Nice. And we have another cornerback. I'm going to just take him. Rashad Moorhead. 91 speed. Expected normal, so I'm not, you know, I'm not going crazy over it. And we found ourselves an elite kick power kicker with A accuracy. Could it be? It is a hidden. I don't know if he's generational, but it is a hidden. 99 kick power. The last kicker we had wasn't the worst I've ever seen, but he was definitely pretty damn bad. So we had to do something and kind of lucked out this one. I might even look for a punter because Michael Dixon's not any spring chicken these days. Let's take a look at that draft recap. That corner probably would be pretty damn high. Yeah, 79. That's pretty damn good. Kicker, 75, could be generational. I, I kind of feel like he's not. Quarterback, I mean, that is exactly... Oh, McLean was 76. That's exactly what I imagined when I thought of that quarterback. That exact overall and higher than... Oh, wow, look at that catching, though. This corner is definitely going to be the guy that steals Reek Wollen's job when he needs a contract in, like, two seasons, which, I mean, that's fine. Two seasons is a long time from now, so... I mean, future-proofing hard, because what else can you do? Only star Deva, unfortunately, but so is Woolen. Jenkins, if he's higher than star, I'd be shocked, but this is what I saw. This is what I thought. And at least we've got somebody young that's kind of learning the ropes. Maybe even look if uh, Howell's kind of, uh, yeah, star Dev expected. If Howell's playing badly in preseason, maybe this guy gets a chance. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I kind of want to see the kicker, see if he's generational. That really matters too much. He looks really good. I don't know if that's generational level, but... He's a good kicker, and that's all that really matters to me. But Superstar would be cool. And he is Superstar. Fair enough. Fair enough. He's a good player. And everyone else, it just forget it even happened. Of course, McLean's going to have a weird build, which is, yep. This is one of those, uh, you know, Superstar dev agility builds that we usually see. And unfortunately, he didn't have the dev to go with it. It's now Season 6. I don't know what to do with the quarterback spot. We'll look at the preseason if uh, there's... You know, a crazy bad Howell and crazy good Jenkins situation will start Jenkins, but realistically, it'll probably be the way it is now. But if middle way of the season we are struggling hard, then there could be a quarterback change. But for right now, that is the plan. As far as how the team is developing, it's not going super well, but as far as who we can replace, there's not many names. I mean, we're already pretty damn good. I mean, all the positions we have are pretty much locked in with high potential guys or are there already are pretty damn good as is. All right, looking at the first game, Jenkins wasn't bad, but Howell in his limited time was technically better. Then we look at game two where Jenkins uh, was definitely better than Howell, but Howell wasn't so astronomically bad that that really means anything. And then for the third and final game, they're both pretty similar, but, I mean, Jenkins kind of better because of the completion percentage. I would say Jenkins almost maybe got a slight nod, especially when you consider, like, you know, Howell should look way better, right? So, I would say Jenkins got the slight nod, but once again, slight nod with that big of an overall difference isn't enough to make the QB change, in my opinion. Who would have thought? Another little losing streak. Johnson, the contract's actually not that bad. Brewer definitely gets a contract. Hargrove, because of the contract price, gets a contract. Uh, Lenore is definitely a casualty. Leonard might actually be a casualty because of all those linebackers we drafted in the past. Uh, Lindsay, maybe. Dickinson, probably. But yeah, the money is uh, it's drying up a little. Just a little bit. Especially since we're going to need to pay quarterbacks soon. Or start Jenkins. So, of the players I paid, these are the ones that are left over. Leonard, I don't think it's worth paying. I don't think he's worth paying. Lenore is a bit on the older side, but more importantly, just can't afford him. Uh, and then Lindsay, I paid the center, so uh, cut me some slack. I'm going to just get a new lineman for him. Finally, we're in the playoffs automatically. It's not a great season, but it's a pretty good one uh, as we lose again. Sweet. Love, love losing like a million games right at the end. But uh, we made the playoffs. That's all that matters. Uh, enough complaining. We know the game's ass. Okay, we don't need to. We don't need to hear it again. Three out of four losses in the last games: the Rams, the Jets, and the Cardinals. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. 
But uh, let's take a look at the stats and awards. Didn't change the scheme or anything like that. We've been running the Bengals offense with the Falcons defense with a 3-4 disguise. I heard that's pretty good. It's been the best we've had so far this rebuild. Howell back to that 36-12, which is good. Definitely good. Walker was great again. Brewer is pretty good. Could he get to X Factor? We'll see. Metcalf was decent and Jigbo was decent. Taylor was decent. Blocking was the worst we've had. Like, even the guards in the center giving up eight and nine sacks. Kind of crazy. Bain Jr. moved to a 3-4 and actually puts up 10 sacks. Impressive. Jenkins back to 10. Murphy at 7. And then Johnson, we just paid a seven-year $105 million deal to, had two and a half sacks. Worth it. Turner, the generational kicker, missed five kicks out of 13. Sounds generational to me. Punter over 50 yards per punt, which is all I ever asked for. MVP is how on the list. He's not not really super shocked with the amount of picks he threw. Any award wins, though? It would appear the answer to that question is no. But here we go against the Rams, who we believe just lost to. Ironically enough, letting them in to the playoffs. Maybe, maybe it's strategic, though. Is going to be our first opponent in the wild card round. Going to the end of the game, the Rams score first, 7 0. They score again, 10 0. They score again, 17 0. We finally score, 7 17, halftime. Drive, we get down by 7, down by 14, and we will keep this alive. Seven point deficit. We're struggling to move down the field. Fourth and three conversion, 24 all. Huge, like almost first play touchdown. And then we throw a pick, and they do get a first play touchdown, and that might be enough. And we're still moving. Oh, no, we're not. We're, we lost. Sweet. 38 to 24. Can't even beat the Rams. Sweet. Love this. Sam Howell is... He's an at-best average player, and we need to replace him. That's really all there is to it. Any dev ups at all? Oh, Brewer does go to X Factor, which we paid him a long term deal too, and things are looking pretty good. If Metcalf needs a contract soon, which I think he might, just for like money savings sake, do we not like trade him off? Like at 31 years old, after a thousand yard season, he's still probably worth like a late first round pick. No, do take a 10 mil dead hit, but it's probably worth it gaining that value. Uh, looking at the rest of the team, though, once again, no dev ups anywhere. We also have Donaldson who could just play free safety right away, but definitely will grab or look to grab a uh, a safety in the draft, I think. And we'll probably have an extra first round pick to do it because I think you let Metcalf go, especially if he actually does need that contract next year, which I think he will. We have $33 million, and I am not going to spend any one bit of it here. Lindsay might have been the only kind of guy that I was kind of thinking maybe I should have, but. Outside of that, and I guess Michael Dixon on two more years, that is where we stop. Let's take a look at the free agents that we will not be able to afford. Holy crap, Jalen Hurts is asking for a lot of money. Christian McCaffrey's there. He's like a one- or two-year type of guy. Which, speaking of, I didn't even pay attention if Kenneth is an X-Factor or not. If he's not, we may be in some troubles with him regressing. And I didn't even expect this to go. I was just kind of testing offers. Metcalf and Wollen, who are on one-year contracts to the Buccaneers for a first-round pick. Pick three overall. We now enter the draft with pick three overall and a pretty solid-looking quarterback. I think I think we trade for this, this quarterback, this pick one, if you will, uh, the Bears apparently have a quarterback. He's not even on their list. I think he's an 83 overall. 83 overall uh, Landry, who they recently paid because he's been in the league for three years already. Uh, so, yeah, I don't I don't feel like it would make a lot of sense for them to, to move on from that guy. I'm not sure what this trade is worth. It's worth more than that. Okay, I kind of felt like it would be a second and a third. Okay, maybe I had to give them a... 21. I mean, it is a pretty big jump, right? Let's. I'm just, you know, I want to see my values. I want to make sure I'm getting as much by... Oh, wow. It's going to be more than 21. That is a little costly. I ain't going to lie. A whole decent first-round pick on top of a third. This is absurd, no? Is this not, like, too much? Basically, I had to go forgo our whole draft just to move up two spots. Uh, must be nice to suck slightly more than we do. Uh, we end up trading pick 3, 21... 50-something, 85, 53 and 85, I think, to move up to number one overall. This quarterback better be worth it. He looks worth it, but I don't know for a fact. He has all of these A's. 
He's 22 years old. Elite throw power, 47840. Could be generational. But C throw throw on the run is C. Play action B, awareness B. I don't know if he will be. He just better be hidden. No shot! I just drafted a bust. He's not a bust, but he's he's normal dev. There's no way. There's no way. All of that for that. I literally have a better quarterback sitting back up. Uh, you better win Rookie of the Year, dude. If this guy doesn't win Rookie of the Year, I swear. We should have to fourth and a fifth to move up like 17, 18 spots to uh, grab a lineman. The Cummings. Let's take a look at him. Mr. Ralph Cummings. Kind of built to play center only, but looks good enough. Hidden dev. At least we got a hit in this class. I can't believe. QB1 was normal dev. That is insane. That is so unlucky. It's unbelievable. Simulate a draft with a guy that looks like that like a hundred times in a row, and I guarantee he's a hidden dev 80% of the time. Noah Burnham, wide receiver, normal dev. Love it. I'm losing my patience. And, you know, it, it does happen. You know, just because you take a QB first overall doesn't mean that they should be, like, the GOAT. But our, you know, kind of experience is usually they are. So... Definitely disappointed that once I finally get one of those types, they suck. Well, they're at least normal. I don't know if he sucks or not, but they're normal dev. Didn't get a safety either, but at least we have that superstar waiting around. Here we go, draft recap. As, okay, he is a 77 overall, at least. Um, and ignore these two players. Um, let's take a look at his ratings. I think he's going to have to start because he is the first pick overall. And yeah, I mean, he is very good with a paranoid sense of pressure, but normal dev. Dev is pure pain. Pure pain. 21-year-old Hillman doesn't have that issue, though. He is hidden Dev. Can't wait to see this, Dev. Okay, it's only star and fairness. Could get a breakout quarterback award, I suppose, or, or a scenario, I suppose. Hobson, 23 years old. Obviously, I was never going to choose him, but he would have to be at least superstar to even be considered better than our guy, I think, which he's not. Kind of just an average quarterback class, even though our guy looked like he was going to be a god. Of course, the draft's already over, but they're projecting the Titans at pick 11. I'm trading Sam Howell to the Titans for said pick. We have a new quarterback in town. Howell's been good, but he hasn't been able to elevate us. It's one of those weird situations where you see, you know, a coach maybe uh, getting fired after making the playoffs because they've made the playoffs. They've made the playoffs. They've made the playoffs, but they've never really won any games. So, at this case, new QB... If that doesn't work, I guess we just get fired. Here we are on to Season 7. Should still have some time, especially if Weary wins Rookie of the Year, which we're hoping he does because obviously he is a 77 overall. He should have a really good chance at it. Offensive line definitely took a little bit of a hit. Definitely need to future-proof that position a little bit and maybe look for a new wide receiver uh, as far as wide receiver 1 goes, though. It's going to be Brewer with JSN thrust in the number 2 spot. Tight end looks great. Running back, I worry about regression, but we're fine for now. Middle linebacker, we have an X-Factor and a Superstar, so no worries there. Bain had a pretty good year last year, just not good enough for a dev up, unfortunately. We lose Woolen, but we do gain someone that is younger and cheaper in the process. Free safety is a huge loss, but overall, the team is still in a decent spot, and financially, we're better off this way. We're having a so-so season so far. $97 million, Bain, ooh... A lot of money here. Pierce, I think the price is just too good not to. Cross is 100% gone. Isaac will keep. Tatum will keep. And then some of those names in the front end, man. That value is expensive. Jenkins is pretty damn good, though, right? How much is that per? I can live with that, actually. I can 100% live with that. Six-year 141. Leaves it with 74 million. The lineman will be at about 10 total. Bane, however, unless he is absolutely killing it right now which he really isn't, he is a cap casualty, I think. About $30 million per for a guy that isn't performing? Nah, you can keep it. Pierce, hoping for a dev up. Six-year, one or six-year, 151. Six-year, maybe 56. Uh, and then we already talked about the lineman we'll get, which should be really cheap. And we're back in the playoffs automatically with a 10-6 and six plus. Maybe 11-6 11 and, 11 and six season, eh? Our best season yet, I suppose, uh, suppose Weary. The number one for yards. Uh, you know, a little iffy in the beginning, and then, you know, really strong second half of the season, something we haven't really seen too much of so far in this rebuild. 
Looking at uh, the stats and awards, Weary, 4,400 yards, 31 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. Walker had a lot of touchdowns, decent yards per carry, slowing down a little bit, though. Uh, receivers, I mean, just kind of a team effort. JSN did the most. O-line, uh, a lot of sacks allowed. A lot. 10 sacks allowed from the center position is ridiculous. Like, you're, you're basically not even an NFL talent at that rate. I don't know what's going on here, but... Not good things is what's going on. Uh, pass rush still can't consistently get double-digit sackers, even though we have one of the best edge duos in the league. Obviously, that'll be gone after this season because there's no point to keep him. I'm not paying $30 million per for a guy that put up four whole sacks. That's just stupid. It's stupid that he only had four sacks in general, but still uh, not on the list for MVP. Not really shocked, but rookie of the year. That's all I care about, which we don't win. Nice. Please tell me we at least got a dev up. Just from the stats, Reinhardt wins MVP. That really sucks. McCaffrey goes to the Cowboys. And we go to the playoffs, taking on the New York. No, I don't know why. The New York Giants. Yeah, that's who I. The Giants are probably not even in the playoffs at this rate. But the Buccaneers. Didn't we just trade with them big time? Where are the Giants? I think I just ran by them. But uh, didn't we make a big trade with the Buccaneers? Was it them that we gave all those? Don't tell me that's the team we gave. Metcalf and Woolen too, was it? Was it? It was! This won't backfire. Watch freaking Woolen be superstar. Okay, he's not fair enough. He's regressing. But they kept him. They kept him, I suppose. That's interesting. Although I don't know why I would say that's interesting. This is literally their first year with him. Time either goes by really fast or really slowly when doing these. It's hard to keep up. It really is. But hey, they went from the third pick overall to playoffs. I mean, I'm not saying we did that, but we kind of did that, which is interconference, which is questionable at best. But hey, 14 to zero at half. We have uh, we have spies. We have insider info. Not really, but we're at least winning the game, 21 to 14, and we win a playoff game. Oh my God! Get the camera, mom. Get the camera now. Uh, of course, Weary was pretty good. Walker was okay. Receivers, Metcalf, did pretty well for them. But who won the game? That's all I got to say. Who won the game? Hargrove with a sack. They missed a kick. I mean, it's kind of a boring-ass game, though. I'd be so freaking bored out of my mind unless I was a Seahawks fan. Because at least if you win, you win. But, man, that is not the experience that I would have liked to see if I was anyone at the game. To the divisional round. Let's see who we're playing against. The Lions. Okay, I mean, it's not the Cowboys. It's it's not an easy team, but it could have been worse. They have Jalen Hurts. Okay, it got significantly worse. They've got like a 99 overall quarterback now. That's fun. Here it is. End of the game. 7-0. 7-7. A lead. 14-7. We'll take it. They get a touchdown to tie it up. Right before half, we had a chance. Didn't take it. Second half start. Not bad. Up 7. Up 4. Up by 11. The Lions won't go away. It's an eight-point game. That could do it. They won't go away. And with three seconds on the clock, I want to come into the game. Uh, assuming the clock's not running. This actually gives them, in my opinion, a better chance to win. Eh, maybe not. Maybe, maybe I'm lying. I might be lying. Let's see what he can do. Has a chance, and he gets blasted. We're moving on to the championship round. Okay. Maybe a rookie quarterback is all we need. He threw a pick, but... Considering he's a rookie, could have been worse. Walker killed it. Stroud had a touchdown as well. Jigbo was pretty decent. Sacks, just, we have no pressure. We have no pressure. Next team we rebuild, it's got to be a 4-3 team. I don't care. It's a 4-3 team. We have to. I'm, I'm sick of it. The defensive numbers in a 3-4 are abysmal. Pepto-abysmal. Here we are to the championship round. Anyone but the Cowboys, which it'll be because they have Christian McCaffrey. It's the Packers. Technically a 4-3 team now, I believe. I know that's what it's slated to be. I don't know what else it would be, but uh, I'm pretty sure, damn sure. End of the game. This should be uh, in favor of us, especially at home. 10-3, to three, not a, the best start, but it's 10-all now. Defense held its... Man, definitely holding its end of the bargain right now. They drive down, still can't get a field goal. Up by 10. Defense is cooking. Oh, this could be anyone's game. Come on, just score a field goal and you win the game. Just a field goal. And that's going to be the game, I think. Barn a miracle, which they won't get. The Seahawks. Oh, wow. Nice little last second try, though. Are in the Super Bowl. Weary was not great, but another, you know, 
two plus rushing touchdown game. Jaden Reed was pretty good. I mean, it was a team effort. Defense, did it finally cook up? I mean, it's still pretty mediocre, but the defense did make a lot of stops. Turner missed one field goal, but was great nonetheless, as Cam Little missed a field goal too, but he didn't have four, you know, total makes or three extra makes that our guy did. So same misses with less kisses. I don't know, less less hits. Obviously, our guy could have missed from, like, you know, chip shot range, whereas their guy might have missed from long uh, and Byron Murphy must already be regressing because, yeah, he never got to superstar, but his overall is, no, he's just, I mean, he's not even a bad player. 88 power move, 92 block shots, really good. He's just not that good of an overall. 87 is kind of low for those ratings, in my opinion, but if we win a Super Bowl, I don't think anyone cares what overall anyone is. And here it is, the Jets. Uh, I kind of, like, recovered on myself earlier in the, uh, in the playoffs, and I meant to say Jets. That's how I thought we were playing, and I tried to recover with Giants. The fact that it actually is the Jets is kind of concerning now. I'm a little worried. Just a little bit. Who do they beat? They beat the Patriots, Jags, and Ravens. I mean, there's some okay teams in there. The Ravens being by far the best of that bunch, especially in Madden or on Madden paper even. But 13-4. Jets aren't playing around. Take a look at our team. Weary does go up in dev. Thank you. Taylor also goes up in dev, which is great. Walker not going to dev does suck, though. Witherspoon's a superstar X-Factor. McDougal's an, uh, a superstar. I like to see that. But, yeah, the biggest one, definitely Weary, is you know didn't win Rookie of the Year. Could have easily, number zero, by the way, uh, could have easily just been normal dev, which would have sucked. But, no, he uh, did go up in dev. We're fine. For all the marbles, 91 versus 91. Seattle versus New York. Two big staples for this uh, country, kind of. State-wise, I guess. <laughs> uh, although the Jets playing and not really in New York, right? Do they? I don't freaking know. We've had this conversation before. What are we even talking about? 14 all. 21 to 14, the Jets. Ooh, it's looking good for the Jets. Nice touchdown, but it took a long time, which gives the Jets a chance to walk off with the win. Huge stop. Fourth and 18. We actually could walk off with the win. I hate this game. 45 seconds. We can't kick the field goal. Maybe we at least missed it. I, I can live with a missed field goal rather than a non-attempt. Which, speaking of, is the defense going to make a play? Oh, we're going to lose the Super Bowl because the game doesn't allow us to kick a field goal, isn't it? Isn't it? Where is it? Oh, my God, EA. 56 seconds were wasted to not kick a field goal from chip shot range. Why do I bother? I've got to start coming into the game when it's clear that it's going to happen. We just got cucked out of a Super Bowl. I don't care what anyone says. That counts as a win. And in our head, we have just won the Super Bowl. Way to go, boys. We have cooked. Like, I just don't understand, like, what's being coded and why it's being coded to do that. Like, should it not be simple that, like, okay, no play can go, especially a run play. No run play should go over 50 seconds. 56 seconds on a run play? How is that even possible for, for starters? And two, if we're trying to set up the field goal, why would that clock ever waste over 40 seconds or 45 seconds if we're trying to waste clock but set up a field goal you know um i don't know but we're losing cross because the cost take away that uh r remove one of the s's and add a t yep that's how it's done uh, a little too high i think and then bane obviously isn't even worth the money let alone you know how much it costs to get him back so we're losing two staples of this team franchise tackle quote unquote franchise uh, pass rusher, which I suppose you can argue that quote-unquote tackle as well, because I don't think there's a single season, maybe one, where he didn't give up double digits. 64 mil could pay one position group if he really wanted to. Ooh. It's only a three-year as well. I'm gonna do it. I'm doing it. I'm going for Aiden Hutchinson. I don't even know if I'm gonna get him. Mahomes is there. Nobody wants him. Apparently nobody wants a franchise quarterback. Been seeing this a lot lately, though. Yeah, I mean, I've made my decision, Aiden Hutchinson. We're at least going to attempt him to be a Seattle Seahawk. Let's see if we get him. Nice. That is going to be fun. What were his numbers anyways? Probably not even that good. Ah, double negative. Not really double negative, but uh, a reverse psychology. Yeah, I mean, he'll join us and not have a double-digit season for the first time ever since he's playing outside linebacker. But still, totally worth it. Brought him in. We need a pass rusher. We got a guy that's literally proven. All right, before the draft starts, we ended up trading Mac, who's on a contract year, and a fourth round this year for the superstar 25-year-old lineman 
Uh, from the Bears, Mr. Charlie Borland. He was 25, right? Not 23? Yeah, 25 years old, which is, I mean, he's superstar dev, don't get me wrong. But 25 years old is definitely no spring chicken. And ultimately, I just needed a tackle guaranteed. I wouldn't say he's the best, but he'll be the tackle for now unless we find someone better in the draft, which I don't know if that's possible. And I did not expect to have the second pick overall, which means I'm going to have to do a little more scouting here. Okay, I mean, that's definitely something. I'm not even sure what we need. There's some pretty decent-looking quarterbacks, but that's not something we technically need. Uh, um, Generational? We have a generational quarterback here, I'd imagine. The speed, the eliteness at 6'4". And he's a white dude. Excuse me? I'm just kind of scouting, you know, you guys seen a bunch of A's in there. I'm like, hey, let's take a look. That guy's ridiculous. Okay, I don't know who that number one overall guy is. Maybe he's like the GOAT. But I'm going to be trading this pick off to a team that needs corner or uh, quarterback and i am going to ask for literally all of their newborn children that sounds sus as hell but you know what i mean that it's gonna cost them a lot like why couldn't weary just kind of suck a little bit that's also sounding sus but like that quarterback looks ridiculous but i can't get rid of weary weary looks good too you know this isn't a rosen situation you know there's arguments there but this there's really not an argument weary just needs to be the guy but at the same time, drafting that guy would be ridiculous. So who needs a QB, I guess? I can't do it. I cannot allow the Chiefs to be goaded again. I just can't. But they might be the team with the most... Nah, why would I give them the pick? It's got to be someone else. All right, we ended up trading a second pick overall, a fifth and a sixth this year for Dallas's seventh overall. There's something early in the second round and a first next year. They had a really nice safety that I was willing to uh, make a trade for, but they wanted way too much for him. And I was like, eh, it's not going to be it for me. They go wide receiver, which is interesting. We have pick seven, so we can still keep it. You know, nobody wants this guy. They need a quarterback very high, and they didn't want him. I can't take him, though. Like, wh what am I going to get out of him? You know, I, I don't know why this guy's still here. This just is stupid. And I made a promise to myself that I would not be drafting linemen high ever again. It's just, it's not worth it. You know, in real life, sure, you maybe get some ridiculous franchise tackle in game. I can get that later. Do I just take this quarterback anyways? Uh, and just in case Weary sucks, it, I'm doing it. I don't care. Hidden dev. 96 speed, 92 excel, 94 throw power. I mean, we still got ridiculous value. Do we just flip him for something in the future? Maybe Weary sucks this year? I don't know. I, I really, like, we're in a situation where we are so, like, we have such a luxury position that we just don't need anyone that hard. And this guy looks like a lie. That is a lie that he's around one talent. And we have our DTs. I mean, that's kind of a position of, of need going forward. You know, Byron Murphy needs to be replaced after this season, I think. But I don't really like any of these guys. The problem is, if I do want a DT, I have to take one now because we don't have much depth. Do I go safety, actually? I like Danny Hilton a little bit. 21 years old, 5'11". I didn't even expect him to be here. I'm going Danny Hilton. And he's in depth. What's our next pick? Did we have a decently high second round because of that trade down? I might actually go running back here. That running back I seen looked pretty good. I don't like going high running back either unless I know they're generational. And I highly doubt this guy is one of them. But 6'1", 21, pretty fast. Good trucking. I'm taking Nolan Sample. He's also hidden. We're on a little bit of a streak here. Yeah, there was a lot of a conversing with myself about what the hell we're going to do uh, with that first, you know, the seventh overall pick and then the other picks. But I think we did a good job of uh, figuring it out, even though it really isn't going to help us right now. Linebacker, I think we're going to mo move to a 4-3, to be honest. So I want another off-ball linebacker, even though we drafted a bunch of that one year. We do need to pay them now, and I don't know if we can afford them. There's a lot of really good linebackers here. I just don't know who's the best. Usually middle linebacker is the best way to go because they're the most commonly hidden. And more importantly, they usually have the most uh, versatility. But I think Eric Graham is one. And I know he's 22, but he just has like a great all-around about him. And an all-around bad dev is what I meant. And there you go. Uh, you know, Smiley, a third, a fourth, a sixth, a seventh, all mixed up in different years to move up this round. Uh, offensive line really wasn't great outside of the first like round or so. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to probably go with another linebacker because I really didn't like how the, the player we just went, Dev, uh, turned out. We got a lot of athleticism here. You also have Cohen. 
We just went with the athletic outside linebacker. Didn't really work out. Do I not just go Cohen? I think I might just go Cohen. I'm going to go Tyler Cohen. Also normal. Okay, never mind. Yikes. Uh, easily our most unrealistic draft we've ever had in a realistic rebuild, but at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, you get a little funky, try to win a Super Bowl like the Rams did. I, I love that the Rams went so far out of the box and ended up winning a Super Bowl. I mean, it just... It gives me the ultimate excuse for my unrealistic behavior. It's just great. I mean, I don't know why yeah, he is a very good player. I, I was going to get excited, and I was like, oh, yeah, we already knew he was going to be good because he literally looked like a generational player. 80 overall with unbelievable athleticism. Trigger happy sense of pressure. Don't know if he's going to be an X factor, though. We've seen a lot of, like, star and superstar devs, and he, you know, he is a generational player, physically generational uh, number seven, number ten, why not? And then we have Hilton, the free safety. I think he will start. I know we have a superstar there currently, but the ceiling of that guy is nowhere near as good as this guy. Like, I get the other one superstar, but he's like E79, 80 overall. He's already 25. Star Dev, you know, he's not superstar, unfortunately, but Star Dev, I think this guy should start. Wins rookie of the year, who knows? Or if one of the linebackers win, whatever happens. Nolan Sample, really good trucking, pretty damn athletic. Dev, I mean, probably going to be star again, but I'm, I'm feeling superstar. I'm really hoping it is, and it is not. And then, of course, the linebackers. Uh, technically, Graham's the better of the two, but I would imagine it's because he's actually an outside linebacker. Basically, no coverage ratings. And then Cohen, who should have really good coverage ratings, is what about his block shed? Yeah, you just get a little bit more balance with these players, which, I mean, that's why middle linebacker is so good. Was there anyone else we wanted to like look at? I don't think so, right? All these two guys are actually really good. I think that was kind of it. Actually, there was a tackle I wanted to see. I don't remember what the hell his name was. Was it Black? The guy was like 7'6'7", seven, seven I wanted, so I don't think it was him. 6'6". Six, six. Oh, here he is. 72 overall, Colbert. He is in dev. 6'7". A little raw. Giving me... Uh, Kia, what's his name? Evan Neal vibes. Star dev. I gave up Murray to the Falcons for a third-round pick. We can't afford every linebacker we have, and we got two new guys. Even though they're normal dev... Rookie of the year, anything can happen, and, uh, you know, we don't really get to use him too much, so I think that's going to be the move there. Uh, Lily will be a starter, and then I guess Cohen's the better of the two. Might also try to trade off either Uman, Mielan, and or Franklin. I know both of them are on one-year deals, so I'd like to keep one of them for actual, like, back, ru you know, back rubs. <laughs> one of them's doing back rubs, I guess. Um, backup pass rush, uh, so I might actually trade off Franklin, because he was a former really high first-round pick, so why not, right? He was. That's what we did with him, right? Yeah, pick 14 overall. That isn't worth at least a third. I don't know who is. So we'll uh, keep him on me, Allen. Maybe even give him another contract to play back up and uh, move on with our roster, I suppose. Uh, Bullard, that's a pretty high... I mean, once again... Oh, I'll take... Uh, Le was that like Michael Kendricks? Okay. But yeah, we're going to be moving to a 4-3. I'm kind of sick of it, honestly. I'm just really sick of it. So Hargrove is going to continue to learn as a uh, block shed type, but realistically, he is the weakest of the links. So uh, Kendricks, I like him being here. I mean, it, honestly, not too expensive to get rid of Hargrove. Could trade him off next year for like even a fourth-round pick. But we're going to be moving everyone that isn't a... I suppose he could actually stay here because he actually has speed to play pass rush, even though I don't really like him there. We're going to be moving everyone according to that 4-3 scheme. It is now year eight. We almost won the Super Bowl, but fell short. We have options at quarterback. Uh, we have, like, every quarterback in the world. Uh, we have an X-Factor generational super speedy quarterback at two. Weary, who is a really good rookie for us. Uh, wide receivers are great. Running back, we do have a backup who looks like he could be the heir to the throne, but it would be nice if uh, Walker would have just got a dev up or still gets a dev up. X-Factor running backs do last a bit longer, so, you know, if he would have gotten an X-Factor dev up last year, he probably could, you know, stay for the rest of his rebuild, 32 years old, and still be in the 90s, very close to it. Tight end's amazing. O-line's definitely a little bit worse than it was before. i seen Colton Miller in free agency. I wanted a mentor to develop this left tackle of ours, uh, who's a superstar, but uh, he's going to end up being the starter anyways. He's just such a high overall and then defensively, obviously, we got to move this to a 4-3. It would be Hutchinson and Johnson on the edge, Jenkins and Byron Young on the inside, Lily, Haggerty, and uh, Cohen as the linebackers, free safety Hilton, strong safety Thinneman, and then the corners uh, are uh, great, obviously. So that's the squad. 
into year eight. Well, in the negotiation time, and uh, things aren't looking so great. So obviously you let Donaldson go. Lily, we can afford. Uh, Haggerty, we can afford, but should we? Byron, I think, has to go. We can't afford everybody, and uh, he is costing a lot of money. He's really good for a star dev player. We also have Mark Andrews. I don't know if you noticed that, but he's obviously nearing the end of his career. But still, you know, we get as good of a roster as we have right now, and we just try to win it all. You know, we, we try to pull off that Eagles freaking uh, dynasty team. What, what, what are they called? The dream team that where they killed it and, like, grabbed every free agent possible, but still didn't get it done. Um... Do we go Haggerty? That's a lot of money. How much is it? 15 million. If I can do 15 million per... Hmm. That's a pretty damn good salary, bud. I think I need to make it work. I, I really like Haggerty, and he's so good for his, uh, you know, age. So we just replace DT, but we keep Haggerty. I think that's the plan. An unbelievable start to the season just absolutely ruined by a complete choke job which we're still gonna go 12 and 5 but we started 8 no we started 8 no we go 12 and 5 like that is a really bad finish of the year Th three straight losses then we win three in a row I'm like oh those three losses must have just been a fluke then we lose the last two I mean there was absolutely a bye week in our horizon and we just fell flat I don't know what else to say uh let's take a look at the uh actual you know, and we already looked at the win-loss, actually. We don't need to do that. I, I'm normally, you know, in, in like, checklist mode. Like, okay, we have to do this because I forgot to do that. And it's like, no, you actually just do what you want to do. Oh, no, no, no. Weary, those numbers are so average for a Madden rebuild. Walker, pretty good. Maybe a dev up. Receivers, not the best. Blocking, Colton Miller, you know, wasn't the best either. Tatum wasn't the best. Pass rush, there you go. I mean, probably a 4-3 cause, but... 19 for Hutchinson, 13 for Jenkins, 12 for Johnson. I mean, what a year for pretty much all of these guys. Cohen, hopefully rookie of the year. Just some sort of award or dev up is all that really matters. I don't really care how it happens. Yearly awards, MVP goes to Mr. Lamar Jackson. Kenneth Walker, I mean, he won Offensive Player of the Year. You would think that's good enough. Aiden Hutchinson, Defensive Player of the Year, Offensive Rookie of the Year, uh, number five for the backup running back. Cohen, the Rookie of the Year on defense. Best quarterback apparently was weary at three. I know the pick, the touchdown to pick ratio was good, but is was he really good? I mean, 4,100 yards. I just feel like, you know, especially since it was worse than his rookie year, that's that's kind of a regression, no? I don't know. Let's go against the Panthers, though, and see if we can do what we, you know, finish what we started last year. Going to the end of the game, 6-0. The Panthers scored a touchdown, but did not get the extra point. We get the interception, but Cohen, the rookie of the year, ends up giving us a touchdown, 13-7. We score, but we don't finish the drive. Second half, we're down by six. The offense is doing nothing. We get a field goal, finally, some more points. But the offense is just doing nothing while the defense is locking things down. And it's going to lead to a field goal. Seven minutes left with a pick. The defense is basically single-handedly winning this game. If we do, and... EA, please, for the love of God, don't tell me that a minute went by for the final play of regulation. We've seen some bad ones, and the defense does it! We've seen some bad ones, but that would be on top of on top of bad. It was a negative three rushing yard touchdown. Of course it was. It looked like a blocked touch, uh, field goal, no? Or a um, uh, punt. No, it was actually a safety, no? Wow, this is an all-timer. I have never seen one this bad before. EA just said there was a 1 minute and 10 second play to end the regulation. That is insane. Once again, we talked about it, right? If it's 50 seconds, I'll give him a pass. I'll say, hey, you know what? Maybe it was a pass play. And it took a long time for the ball to be thrown. And then a receiver caught the ball and they took a long time to go down. Sure, maybe 50 seconds. A minute 10? How is that even possible? We're trying to line up the biggest chip shot field goal of all time, and we said, you know what? Let's run to the backfield for 110. Oh, no, we ran out of time. I don't know. I don't know how you how you defend that from a coding standpoint, but Bryce Young, he just got defensed. This defense absolutely won this game. I don't want to be that cliche, cliche Legion of Boom 2.0, even though I want to be. I lied. I really do. Turner was ass. But... 
is this the Legion of Boom 2.0? I mean, I don't like saying 2.0 because that's new and improved. That's updated, which is like, uh, it's, you have to be twice as good, kind of. It's like the new version. I don't know if that's true, but it might be in the title. It gets clicks, and it's, at least especially if we win this Super Bowl, it's kind of true. The defense carried the hell out of that game. They even won the game because of freaking a safety. I mean, that's un unbelievable. We have to go against the Cardinals, who are the division leaders of our division, who have, of course, Patrick Mahomes. Why wouldn't they? Well, we know the scheme can absolutely make the player. It seems like Mahomes, the player, has made the team, as uh, this Cardinals team is usually not this good. I don't know what their scheme is, their playbooks, but pretty damn good stuff. And here is the defense locking down again. 20 points. Okay, they are starting to score a bit, but that's kind of because the offense wasn't sustaining drives. This is Mahomes, so holding him to 35 points seems like an impossible feat. I mean, let, let's see this clock. Wait, we're at the 37-yard line, and all the suggested plays are run plays. I mean, I'm actually going to agree with it on this specific formation, but in general, we need more yards, no? As Kenneth gets blasted to the 24-yard line, but that's a huge gainer. Do you think if I wasted the clock down to three seconds, they'd actually kick the field goal, or they'd run out of time again? Once again, not really doing ourselves any favors by... Wow, Kenneth was insane. By uh, lining up this field goal on the wrong side, but still. It's 38 yards, this field goal kicker, if he doesn't hit this. At least attempt the field goal. That's all I ask. That's all I ask, EA. Let's see it. If they even attempt it, watch. Run out of time. They hit it. We're out of the championship round. We didn't really play much of a factor there. We ran the ball just to make sure the clock didn't run out because we got screwed the first game. Lucky to win it. Pretty similar quarterbacking, actually, where he was slightly better because his yards per attempt were a little higher. Uh, Kenneth Walker, though, was unbelievable. You can't really compare the QB, uh, you know, the QB matchup because Kenneth did way more for our team than their guys did. The offensive line was on fire. McLean did well. Nothing going on for the pass rush. And Turner, all his field goal or his extra points and his field goals were hit. Or I should say field goal, but six attempts anyways, all in. Needed all of them for the most part. Who is in the championship round besides us? It is the Dallas Cowboys, who actually kind of needed a quarterback themselves. Decided not to go with a quarterback, unfortunately for them, but they're still here, so it doesn't really matter. Or maybe they did and they got him a little later, I don't know. So obviously at seven, we were able to land that generational, even though the Cowboys were one of the worst QB needy teams. Don't tell me the Chiefs ended up with a good QB again, despite not even trading up. I would have taken all their picks for nothing. Thing is, though, their scheme is so good. What's even the point? 9-3. It looked like a defensive play led to that, right? So far, so damn good. This defense is killing it as the offense is just really not trying to win this game. As you can see, they take the lead in the final moments of the game. Huge touchdown. I don't know if I like that. You know, you would think with a defense like this, you would like it. And on 4th and 8, there was a penalty which might win them this game. I mean, look at the, the situation. Like, they are... They are methodically going down the field like the Cowboys do in Sim time and time again. It's it's actually kind of sickening. Like, this isn't a really good team doing this. This is... How is that not a touchdown? Give them the touchdown. Wait, what? Wait. Am I missing something here? What, what just happened? Did he drop it? Did I just call a timeout on nothing? He dropped it. I just wasted a timeout. Well, that sucks. I mean, I'll take it, considering I thought it was actually a completion. I just guaranteed, I like, I thought he was going to get that. And he drops it again. I don't know if it's the same guy. I think it is. Fourth and two. They're going back to mid. It really didn't even work out last time. We just got lucky. We got a knockout. And we got that inside slant. That's what we're defending. Oh, it's a run. That's a really good call. And he's going to be short. And we're going to win the game. I don't care. People can say, oh, you are the reason why you cheated. Well, I don't care. The game's stupid. The game's dumb. There's no realism in this game at all. It's so stupid. You have to literally, like, do everything yourself. Otherwise, you just get crumpled by the bad logic in the game. Just like, like we're at the four-yard line, and they keep throwing counter plays at me. Why would I run a counter at the four-yard line? Someone makes a really good instinctive play, and we lose the game. Doing a lot of yelling for a rebuild, but, I mean, that's just the game it is. As we're going to head on to the Super Bowl. All I'm going to say is if you don't like the fact that I kind of played a decent bit of snaps there, you're a Cowboys lover. How about that? The Cowboys fan watching is like, well, I am. So how about that? Right back to you. Either way, 25 to 20. I mean, 
The defense definitely choked a bit during the second half, but the offense was really not doing a great job of sustaining drives. The defense did enough to hold the Cowboys, who are a really goaded scheme, uh, to, uh, you know, with all those sacks, 20 points, which is pretty good for the Cowboys. It's pretty good defense. And we are on to the Super Bowl. Let's see what we got. Who is it? I didn't even see. Was there... Maybe they already showed the team. I didn't even see it. The freaking Ravens. Bird Battle Super Bowl. DevOps. None for weary. And Kenneth Walker gets the X Factor. And the best part is he hasn't regressed yet because we're in the Super Bowl. He would have regressed at this point, I believe, if we didn't make the Super Bowl. So... The timing of winning the Super Bowl and the timing of getting that dev might have been so damn clutch you can't even, like, measure it. Uh, Cohen went straight to Superstar. Murphy, of course, when we can't afford him or let him go, goes to freaking Superstar. And was Thinnaman already Superstar? I feel like there was one extra Superstar here that I'm not expecting. And it was him. Okay, I was about to say, I felt like something was a little different. Good stuff, though. I mean, it really sucks we're not going to keep Byron. I mean, I might try to find a way to keep him, but... It's really crazy how he has developed as, uh, you know, it's not really common that, especially when I'm not manually upgrading him too much, uh, that, you know, he gets both styles pretty damn high. 92 block shed, 89 power is really good. Normally, you, you know, unless the guy's actually like a power guy, you usually don't see that. Usually it's one or the other. But uh, we have some upgrade points, we'll get those in, and then we'll hopefully, I wouldn't say once and for all, because whether we win or lose here, we got two more seasons, but... At least put a stamp on this thing and have a Super Bowl win. Look at the blocking, by the way. That's ridiculous. Some crazy upgrades there. Taylor's unbelievable, by the way. Here it is. The Super Bowl. Back-to-back -back years. Lost against the Jets last year. And not super great here. Kenneth with a huge touchdown. 7-14. Offense is really not doing a great job. Even doing okay, but the offense is really struggling here. It's a one-point game. We're down by eight. 21 all. Defense gets the stop barely. That fourth quarter snuck on me, uh, up on me. I'm not going to lie. They're driving down the field. Looks like they're going to come away with the touchdown here. And it's going to be up to the offense to get a touchdown back to have a chance here. And we will go for two if it's happening. And from the one yard line, are they going to get it? They get it. Fourth and one. That was crazy. I mean, do you go for two here? Do you go for two? I mean, the defense has really not been that great. If this really was LOB2, I don't think there would be much of an argument to just uh, play defense. But I got to say, I'm not feeling super confident right now. This team is not instilling that confidence into me. Let's see what we got. We're going for it. We're going for it all. Ah, I don't want to hike it. I kind of want to go for the extra point now. I don't like this. They're kind of ready for a pass. I don't care. We're doing it. Kenneth! Hold on! We win! I really didn't want to do that. I felt like this was going to be perfect coverage. We sell, and we lose the game. But no, we come in for the one play in the Super Bowl, go for two, and the Seattle Seahawks are once again Super Bowl champions. Kenneth was too damn quick, and the Seattle Seahawks are going to win the Super Bowl 29-28 to over the Baltimore Ravens. Could have been a Super Bowl last year. Kind of got screwed over by more stupid game management by EA. And this time, we kind of correct those issues and find our way as the champions. Kenneth Walker clutched up in this game and clutched up with his dev, making him able, in my opinion, I would assume, to be the starter for the next two final seasons on top of it. And we have at least considered this a successful rebuild as we have won a Lombardi. I feel like, especially for a 10-year rebuild, you have to win one. In a 5-year rebuild, you know, making some championship rounds, maybe making the Super Bowl a couple times, whatever it is, championship plus rounds, you make it that far. It's probably a win, but a 10-year rebuild, I don't care. I don't care what the situations are. You have to win a, at least a singular Super Bowl for it to be considered successful. And even though it's been a little bit later each and every rebuild we do, it at least once again does happen Weary was decent. Lamar was technically better, but we did not have more rushing touchdowns. We just did we kick more field goals, defensive touchdowns. I don't know what it was, but Byron Murphy was on fire again. Some field goals in there is probably the big case. A close call, but we end up winning it all. And I'll show you guys. You know, there was no restarts or any funny business, as uh, we had to win four games, and we did. Uh, you know, each game was kind of fluctuant. Uh, Twenty for two games, and then 28, 35. 
some tough ones in there, but uh, ultimately we do end up winning it all. And we have two more years to potentially win some more. I don't think money's going to show up, but if it does, i got to find a way to keep Byron, I think. Especially after he got Superstar, he's definitely able to play two more seasons. If he stayed at Star, definitely less of an argument. But uh, we'll see what happens. As far as uh, you know, retirements go, we lose Gallup, who is a mentor-type player. Nothing really, you know, starter-wise. Let's move on to resigns. I don't think money's going to show up here. I don't think it's going to. It would be really against it as well if we do pay him. Let's see if we can find a way. 18.2 mil, just about 18 mil on the nose. If your option for Borland, no thank you. Yeah, we just can't afford him, man. I mean, if we do the tag, we're going to be, like, f super forced here. Appreciate the ta uh, offer. What is the, the tag? I can't afford 30. That's, like, 10 million more than I was hoping. I was hoping, like, 22-ish. 22, I think I would have made the, made it happen. Find some money, but nah, we, we can't afford him. He wanted 23 per, and then we couldn't do that. The tag was way higher than that, and... We unfortunately just ran out of money. Byron Murphy's gone. Don't get me wrong. We have a, a DT, a Superstar DT, and we have uh, two Superstar DTs actually waiting. But, man, Byron really had himself a nice stretch there. And even after the case, we have 14.7 mil. So, yeah, I mean, we really made, even though it wasn't really our choice, the only option we could. You know, we made the decision that the only one that really made sense. We have a lot of money in other players and positions, and... Guys like Aiden Hutchinson did prove their value, so at the end of the day, it's you win some, you lose some. Traded Jenkins at the Bills for a fourth-round pick. Nobody really needs QB. I mean, uh, he's a star dev, but nobody really needs QB that badly. Another pretty bad draft class, we're going to be honest, but more importantly, a bad cornerback draft class, which really sucks. I mean, this is the corner class. It is so bad. This is probably the worst cornerback class I have seen this Madden. Like, corners were so easy to get this year that it probably is. Like, this is the best guy, I would argue. And at best, he's a B man coverage, A zone coverage, which I don't honestly see it with that bad press. And he's around one. Like, this is such a bad corner class. There's a really sick safety. He might even be generational. But even he isn't fast. Oh, he actually is fast enough to play corner. Even, even if I could, he is a top five. Do I trade a top five for a guy that might be halfway decent? That's our biggest need going forward is O-line and corner. I mean, he says top five for that safety, and he's gone already. Okay, I mean, I'm going to slow sim it. I had a wide receiver I might just take or something like that. I mean, this is, once again, back-to-back -back really bad classes and kind of needing corner. I don't know if we're going to be able to afford Witherspoon, our number three corner, who's a superstar, needs a contract. End of the day, that is kind of what I would have been looking for to future proof just because it's two of the same positions need co you know contracts when we're already pretty broke kind of feels like that would make the most logical sense to be next up but yeah not a huge fan of uh this draft class or or like i said the last one really then you have this super elite looking tight end tony peterson uh we have a safety there don't really need a safety too much um baptiste looks pretty damn good but he's really weak so i wouldn't trust it Got to be something off about these players if they're falling, you know, from round one. And that looks pretty obvious to me why he is falling. Uh, so it might even be, like, just a straight-up bust. But, yeah, I'm not really a fan of this draft class. You got this guy who is, you know, good man coverage, but he's not the fastest. 4-4-3, but that left side says solid. It's probably 89, 90 speed at best, which is okay for a corner, but not great. Guard, I don't like taking alignment in the first round in general. But I think, you know what, even though I don't need tight end... There's not a whole lot of talent in this draft class for positions I need anyways. This isn't a crazy trade-up. I'm going to trade up to the Panthers to grab that tight end, have ourselves a really elite group of tight ends. I think that just makes a lot of sense. And once again, it's not really going to cost us too much, so I'm down. All right, traded a first, a third, and a fourth with Moorhead to move up about nine spots with the Panthers to grab a six foot two but really fast tight end. Once again, really is just... I actually didn't really look at our DTs, did I? Yeah, I mean, 2-3 to three looks pretty good, actually. I guess I'll still take the tight end, because, I, I mean, I think the value is there. We had wide receiver, but, I mean, even that's not that big of a need. Tony Peterson, the speed is there. I'm taking him. And he's normal dev, thank you. And Alfred's still there. Like I said, I kind of need a corner. He's not really that fast. I don't trust that. Left side is usually pretty... Like, they're a tandem. Like, you have to pay attention to both. You have to look at this 40 time, and then you have to look at the uh, the left side that tells you, like, solid elite or whatnot. And 
when you tandem those together, usually you get a pretty good accurate rating, which tells me I think he's going to be 88, 89. Just like this Collins guy who, I mean, I scouted him further, but you know, he's not the fastest, but I did allow it you know, to be scouted further because obviously he is still tall, so even if he's not that fast. I don't really think I like that pick. I don't really like the safety. I don't like anything here. But Alfred, he's the closest thing to what I need. And, yeah, like I said, I mean, he is hidden, don't get me wrong, but that's slow for 4-4-3. That left side is, you got to trust it. And DT, it's not as big of a need as I thought. We have two superstar DTs that are on two-year contracts, so we technically don't even have a spot to replace anyone with anyways. Wide receivers are uh, gone. I like McLean here, and I could trade up for Hill. Ooh, Smith is still there, though. 21, I'm taking him. 22... He's still really good. Hidden Dev. I didn't really need him, but I, I like that. That value looked good. And then we're going to move uh, down until one of those linemen are gone. And if none are gone, we'll just take... Yeah, okay, I was about to say, we'll we'll take whoever. But I don't care. It's the Niners. It's the third round. We're going to trade up for the center. They're gaining more than a sixth-round pick, actually. They're gaining a sixth and a seventh with their broke-ass selves to build up a roster that they can't afford with that pick, we're going to be taking that lineman, I think, makes the most sense. Uh, and, yeah, Mr. Bryson Hill is going to be the choice. Looks pretty damn good. Thirty uh, 21 years old, not 31. That would be pretty crazy. What do you think we are, the Browns and Brandon Whedon? Not quite the same age, but, you know, kind of. That was such a weird one. Like, I'm not super into college football, like, watching it. Uh, you know, so... I mean, if it's on, maybe I'll watch something, but I don't really follow it too hard. Was he, like, really good or something? Like, I need to learn about that situation. Obviously, I'm going to be playing college football 25 because, you know, it's like I don't watch an ounce of soccer, if you will, but FIFA is a very fun game to play, especially pro clubs, and I don't know anything. I, I sometimes know where Ronaldo plays. And even then, I don't follow. Like, I remember him joining the Saudi League, and that was that's, like, the last I know of Ronaldo. So, you know, I, you don't have to follow it to enjoy the games a lot and even be good at them. But, uh, yeah. Was Whedon, like, good? Like, what, were the Browns just desperate? I don't even know. But either way, we're going to take Randall McQueen, the super speedy wide receiver. Hidden? Nay, hey, there you go. Clutch. And the final pick, Mr. Irrelevant, I think is going to be Mr. Gallagher. 23 years old. Uh, maybe hidden dev. Let's see. He is normal dev. Okay, I thought maybe. I mean, you see a lot of A's in there for fullbacks, but I don't know. I kind of felt like he was going to be hidden. But yeah, we did have actually some pretty good numbers. Once again, I'm not 100% about, you know, which teams were playing which and, you know, the difficulty and whatnot. But at least he wasn't just like some random shot in the dark, I suppose. Although it didn't really turn out too well. Alfred, I mean, what's his dev even going to look like? He's he's built to play corner. You know what? Even though he's not that fast, he is like slot corner speed, right? Really wish he would have been Superstar Plus, but I think he is built better to play corner, um, like slot corner. So I am going to be playing him like a, uh, a slot corner, I suppose. And we don't really care too much about the rest. I suppose we'll take a look at Roy Sean Smith. 80 finesse move, really good stuff. Block shed's obviously lacking, but still fine. What's that dev looking like? Star dev, number 57 seems illegal. Was there any other, like, positions I wanted to look at? Not really. I guess I want to take a look at the generational, I think, safety. 81 overall. I would have traded up for him for sure, but, yeah, pick three is a little high for my liking. 93 hit power, 95 speed, 82 zone. Doesn't really have that man coverage, even though it said he had a B. This is a very good safety. You would have loved to see him be 6'1 or 6'2, but he looks really good, and he is an X-Factor. That is a good player. This is the state of free agency and the state of the salary cap across the league. A guy like A.J. Brown, the 93 overall, is just a straight-up free agent because nobody could afford him. I don't think we can even really afford too much, but if we really wanted to, we could go left tackle. But I think we're going to start that superstar and just see where we're at. Here we are for Season 9. Just want a Super Bowl feeling great. Uh, McLean needs a contract. We got McQueen to replace him. Uh, Kenneth needs a contract. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. Because he dropped down to a 94, he might drop down to like an 89 if he does. There's no way I can do more than a year. But we are only doing one more year, so I would like to just keep the team going for one final season if possible. Uh, defensively, the only real risk we have of losing this lineup is Witherspoon, but we're actually kind of all paid up, I think, for the most part. So yeah, well, we just lost Byron and our money's low. 
I think we'll make it. I think it's all the offensive line that's really just has a chance of get depleted and has been depleted already in the past. 47 mil, uh, somebody's going to probably be lost. I don't know who that is, though. Uh, Borland, I don't think you want to keep him, even if you could. Uh, we're not actually uh, that bad off. Uh, we'll probably have somebody in, like, weary, as you can see, 57 million for the tag. We'll have to pay them. Um, hmm, I don't know what you do. I think you have to lose McDougal, right? Let's see how good he actually is compared to Witherspoon. Pretty good man coverage, not so great press, and then Witherspoon is obviously going to be unbelievable. He's kind of unreplaceable, right? McDougal, I mean, we just draft a new corner going forward. Can we do a one-year 20.5? Okay, we're down to 27 million. I would like to do a one-year in Kenneth. I think he can easily play one more season. Boom. So $13 million, we could get Borland back, but I think we're just going to save that a little bit to see what we can do about the quarterback. If anything, and then kicker, uh, I really don't want to pay a kicker this much, but if he does a seven-year 31, boom, easy. We're down to 8.8, .8 though, man. It's getting tough. And that's with a rookie deal quarterback this whole time. Here we are, headed to the playoffs. Pretty damn guaranteed to get the bye week, as we had a really good year. Loss of the Bengals at the end, but 15-2. and two. Really good stuff there, as that will be the bye week on top of it. Uh, we lost the second week of the year, and then the final week of the regular season. Weary, who obviously needs a fifth-year option coming up, is and will be the quarterback for the next season, I suppose, but definitely a little worried about being able to resign him if that's our plan, because we do have an X-Factor number two uh, quarterback. Ted end one, Taylor was great, uh, and then everyone else, a little lackluster uh, as far as blocking goes. Borland was really bad, so definitely need to replace him there, and hey, uh, Aiden Hutchins has been, has been amazing. 22 and a half sacks, 14 and a half for Hargrove, eight for Jenkins, eight for Johnson, uh, interceptions, five for McDougal. So, of course, it looks like he'll go to X-Factor when we're letting him go. Turner missed four uh, kicks, two of them being blocked. It's not the worst out of 16 kicks, I suppose. Dixon was pretty damn good again. Yearly awards goes to uh, Lamar Jackson. And Weary was at least on the list, but all the way down at number 10. Uh, no, no, we actually did have best running back and best D-line and best DB. But also a couple of close calls at number two or three in there. So uh, a really good year for the entire team, really. As we head on to this divisional round. We're going against the Vikings. We have them by seven overalls. I mean, I like our odds. Going to the end of the game. Zero to zero. Still zero to zero. Seven to zero. Fourteen to zero. Not looking super great. Fourteen to three at halftime. We get a touchdown. It's fourteen to nine. Four, seventeen to nine. A huge touchdown with a two point. It's seventeen all. Defense has kept us in it as long as possible. On fourth and eight, looks like they're going to have to punt it. Offense has a chance to drive down. And they get a huge touchdown to JSN for 50 yards and make one hell of a comeback to head on to the championship round. Weary, I mean, kind of outplayed Perillo, but Walker with a huge 68-yard run was big. And, I mean, the offense struggled. It really did. Hargrove did really well. Uh, and then interceptions. Yeah, they outplayed us, like, really hard on defense. I mean, look at how many different players got involved on the sacks. That just tells me that they were at us at every direction. 15-2 Seahawks versus the 12-5 Buccaneers. We have them now also beat by seven overalls. The Chargers are waiting for the winner of this game. We turn over the ball early and give them a seven points. This is the stuff the defense has been dealing with this uh, this season, really, this offseason mainly, or this postseason, I should say. But then you see them locking down as much as possible. The only points scored in this game were really because of a short field given to them by our offense. This is LOB style, baby, which sounds a little sus. But, hey, their only touchdown came to the fact that we threw, like, a damn near pick six. Actually, was it a pick? No, they did have a rushing touchdown in there. I was about to say, yeah, this defense really did its uh, job. What about team stats? Yeah, about 150 total more than what what was the possession time? I don't believe that though. Like were they just getting to around like the 50 slash 45 our side of the field and just having a punt every time? I don't see how you could win that much time of possession and just come nowhere near scoring every time. You would have thought you had a couple of you know touchdowns, maybe a field goal or something in there, but one thing that's pretty sick is that we have made three straight Super Bowls now. However, we lose, we are one and two in said time frame 
The Chargers a little bit better than the uh, the last two teams we played in the playoffs. The only two teams we played in the playoffs this year, at least. No dub up for Weary. I think everyone else is already what they are now. Defensively, uh, Hargrove goes to X-Factor, and I think that was it. McDougal doesn't go to X-Factor. A little surprised by that, but Hargrove goes to X-Factor, which is great. You know, it's actually pretty damn sick. Uh, he kind of got wasted. He was a starter for a while, and then we moved to a 4-3, and then you know things didn't really go his way. Not really a good pass rusher, but 89 block shed high overall. That's all I could really ask for. Weary not going to Bedev kind of sucks. Murphy being wasted. Uh, maybe he gets traded off. I'm not sure. Or maybe he's the saving grace when we can't afford Weary, and you know he has to play for two, a season or two. I'm not sure yet, but what I am sure about is we have a chance at back-to-back, -back, which could really, you know, I wouldn't say save the rebuild, but propel it perhaps going to the end of the game the chargers strike first with seven points we counter back with seven we don't get anything they don't get anything we don't get anything they don't get anything throwing interceptions gotta love that huge drive before half gives us the four point lead 17 to 14 we're gonna bounce back we're up by four one touchdown could do it and we have won back to back super bowls with the seattle seahawks I don't want to say it's because of the 4-3 defense, but at the same time, hell yeah, look at that 4-3 defense. Of course, kind of kept the team intact for the most part. Unfortunately, did lose Byron uh, Murphy, but we kind of offered him an okay deal, didn't we? Actually, we didn't, did we? It was actually a super low ball. Never mind, but uh, regardless of the point, I don't really care who's here at this point. We've won bad to back. We potentially could go for the three-peat. Not going to look at the celebration. We've already seen it. We've seen the Super Bowl so many times, so, you know, we don't need to see it anymore. I think the best we've seen so far, though, wow, run game was not the best. But, uh, yeah, Weary, I don't know why he ran so many times. But, uh, yeah, I don't know that the best Super Bowl success we've had in 10 year, I think, is three. But I don't think we've had a three-peat, so that would definitely be an improvement, technically. Also, once again, want to make sure that there's no funny business going on. We win all three games. Definitely more LOB this season. This season was a bit better. The defense uh, really kind of tightened up even more. And as you can see, we are in the negative, which is not a good sign because we're already, like, acknowledging that we're losing names and losing players. But now we're, like, really broke that even if we want to add a player or two back, we can't. We're, like, super broke. Uh, we're 75 mil for the fifth-year option. What is going on? If the fifth-year option is $75 million, I don't even want to see some of the quarterbacks that are going to be in free agency here because there's no way that teams are actually paying their quarterbacks that much, right? There's a couple of teams that are super negative that are paying them and their teams are crippled. And then there's teams that just can't afford their guys, and I bet you they're in free agency. Like, I, I'm genuinely... 75 mil is the highest fifth-year option I have definitely seen. We do have 13 mil showing up here, which I love to see. Lamar Jackson, you know, he's won a lot. Uh, one year, 62. Someone actually is offering that, though. I haven't really seen that too much. Normally, these quarterbacks just go unsigned. But then you go down to Tua, who is an 87 overall, which is still really good, and it's 10 mil per year. No one's biting on him or uh, Leonard or Drake May. These guys are really old, but they're still really high overalls. Here we go with pick 32. There's a couple of decent corners this year. Uh, it's sort of the biggest need. Oh, Jeff Bridges, how are you? DT, kind of a need, uh, as Hargrove, I think, needs a contract. Did we just lose Hargrove? Or, I don't even know. But, uh, there's options there. I scouted further these other corners. You got two uh, round one projected players, and then you also have one of those 6'5 corners that likely looks to be, uh, you know, superstar dev. Banfield looks great, but he's not going to be there. So we're going to sim down until, hopefully, we pray Richards is taken first, because I think Armstead's probably better. And then we take Armstead with a trade-up. All of these draft picks just to move up five spots of the Panthers. Again, the Panthers are uh, the trade-down merchants, if you will. And I'm going to take a cor the, the corner now because I don't like the fact that... Uh, oh, maybe some of these wide receivers would be interesting to look at. Parnell, I don't know how he's still here. Does he not look like kind of good? I don't know. He's probably going to be good. But I don't need a wide receiver that bad. I need a corner, kind of. Not even true, to be honest. But... Uh, Cornerback, I, I didn't like the fact that they were both still here this late, so I kind of feel like Armstead could get, sn like, sniped. So, Armstead's going to be my guy. I worry about that speed, the left side. It shows he's not that great, but he's an elite change of direction and jumper player at 4-3-6-40. It's a little weird, but I'm just hoping he's good, and he is hitting. Yeah, I mean, that left side is to be trusted more than the right for sure, 
but he's still pretty damn good for 6-3. And we move on to 32 in the second round, which might even be a lineman. I think that might be our move. Let's see if there's any 1-2s. I see none. 2-3s. to threes. got some linebackers there, but I think linebackers not really that big of a need this moment. Uh, the 6-5 corner Luke Simpson's there, though, which is definitely intriguing. Don't really need corner anymore, but the value is immense. But, yeah, we need offensive linemen more, I think. I've seen a couple of guys there. Russell looks pretty good. Sheldon did not end up being that good. Forbes is okay. Problem is, I don't really like these, like, undersized dudes playing, like, non-center. I don't really like these linemen at all, though. <laughs> Russell looks good, but that's, like, about it. Uh, Sheldon, I don't really like too much, but he is the biggest, like, not even really the biggest there. I guess we go Forbes, even though I don't really think he's that good. Yeah, he's heading. That's all that matters. And we move on to 32 in the third round, and O-line is kind of becoming a big problem for us. So we're going to go with another one, Devonte Carson, Hindev. And for some reason, really late into this draft, uh, we still have Brandon Metlock, the pass rusher. So I'm going to take him. Normal Dev, I don't really care, though. I mean, this late in the draft, late sixth. The value for the depth spot is not too bad, I think. Unless he's just, like, really bad. But B finesse, a little bit of speed. Got the perfect size for an edge rusher. I think that's perfectly fine. Let's see what we got, though. 75, 73, 74. Okay, so he is ass, though. In fairness, he is pretty bad. Definitely could use him and develop him, but... Yeah, I mean, that's not bad for a late six, though. I think he's better than his overall entails as well. Uh, O-line, I mean, I don't really care too much all about who's the highest dev, and I don't really care to even check that. I feel like it'd be cheating, because I think one of them needs a start, so really I'm just going to be looking at the highest overall, and whoever it is is going to start, which we just seen there. Star dev for Mr. Armstead. I'm curious to see the other guy, because you know, this guy was definitely pretty, and yeah, I don't like that. He's pretty good for uh, man and zone. And the guy we could have had was really more of a corner of zone coverage. Mr. Richard, 77 overall, who was also hidden. Really good zone cover. Looking like a damn safety. Also way more athletic. Let's take a look at that dev. I'm going to be so disappointed, aren't I? Oh, yes, I am. The 10th and final season. We're barely scraping along here. As you got guys like Walker obviously regressing. JSN is, is slightly regressing, I think. He also has, like, no release, which is... Man, that's disappointing. But, uh, you know, we... Are really barely keeping this offensive line going, and uh, defensively, we're you know constantly replacing players and coming close to replacing players every single season. You know, if we have to replace uh, you know like an Aiden Hutchinson, I mean it's going to be really tough. And I know he needs a contract this year, so we'll see what happens. I expect a lot of cap room to show up, but I still don't think it's going to be enough. Ooh, not as much as I thought. <laughs> and <laughs> check out that side of the screen there. Yep, I'm going to move that over just, just a little bit for you. Um, Witherspoon, maybe. Hargrove, maybe. Kendricks, possibly. Aiden, I think absolutely, right? I think you have to keep him on a two-year 44. That is cheap. Did he not take it? He didn't. Nice. Um, I'm going to keep Dickinson. I think you might lose the QB here. That's not that much, though. No, I mean, I'm going to tell you how he's playing, because our backup quarterback is an X-Factor after all, and he's he's kind of keeping up overall-wise, but if Weary's still playing how he is, I mean, it's a better passer rating year, so I suppose, technically, I mean, I'm going to give him the contract. I think the uh, the quarterback contracts have been reset. The TV deals are less than they used to be, and because of that, things are happening. I also think maybe you do a reset at corner just because we have that younger corner and Witherspoon's kind of getting up there. Or maybe you just replace Hargrove and then, you know, start someone like Kendricks here who's cheaper and he's still pretty young. Hodginson obviously will improve that money. Dickinson, I think, I think we can afford this. So 26 mil left. We could get Witherspoon back, but I think... We're just going to play it safer and uh, and replace him. Not that it matters, because obviously it's the last year anyways, but we trade off Murphy for like a really high first-round pick. You get all the you know stuff you need to replace the guys you're missing. It's playoffs time. We were looking pretty good, and we do finish really good, 12-5. Uh, and five. Uh, It was like 8-4, and four, so a decent little finish of the season. Not a great start, or middle, I should say. Uh, but overall, it's just a good year. I mean, we lost to the Bills at the end, but still hold on to... The bye week from the first seed overall. Uh, let's take a look at the stats and awards. Uh, Weary was number one for yards, so earning that contract more than ever. 
I kind of seen the trajectory. I liked it, and we took that risk. It worked out. Three 1,000-plus yard receivers. McQueen wasn't even too far behind. Uh, blocking. Left tackle was terrible, but everyone else was actually pretty damn good. Uh, Hodgins said we had a down year, but it's still really good at 16 sacks. Hargrove was pretty good again. Johnson with 10, and then Jenkins at 6. Interceptions aren't too bad. Turner was really good, and then Dixon was not bad as he returns to the team again. MVP? Not going to have a number two, though. Very close. What's the legacy score? He's got to be pretty up there. Yeah, I was about to say 8,000 legacy. Winning Super Bowls definitely helps your legacy. Who would have thought? Uh, no award wins, but another bye week in the first round of the playoffs, which is better than any award besides the Super Bowl, which is kind of an award, right? Kind of an award. It's just the award. Highest overall for us is defense, 99 overall, 96 overall in general, and the Buccaneers has a 90 overall are going to be the team that we have to play again. Uh, a lot of rain. I mean, I don't know who this really benefits. I guess Seattle's kind of like super rainy, so you would think we'd be a little more <laughs> acclimated, if you will, but the Buccaneers also not a team that runs the ball super well, so uh, yeah, we might have the advantage. 7-3. to three. Buccaneers going to score another field goal, which is all right. 10-6, to six, bit of a field goal battle. I know we have that touchdown, but as you can see, those field goals are flying. It's a close game, though. We're up by seven again, and the defense will hold on. It'll be a 23-13 victory over the Buccaneers. One game away again from being in the Super Bowl four straight seasons. Not a great game from Weary, but did enough. Obviously, it was better than their guy, and the defense really the uh, star of the show in this one. Nothing really crazy with, like, interceptions or sacks, just limiting their scores. Dan B.J. Brown, who do we have? Is it the Cowboys? It's the Vikings. Barely sneaking into the playoffs, but they might find themselves all the way in the championship round against us. Is like deja vu. I don't know. If it's 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 more like deja vu, not whatever I just said. Home game again, of course, with better weather, and the Cleveland Browns awaiting the winner of this game. End of the game. Three to zero. Six to zero. Thirteen to zero. 13-2, they get a safety. So the only point scored so far was their defense. They get a touchdown into the fourth quarter. We are going to win the game and head to four straight Super Bowls. We don't hate it. Things we do not hate, it. Uh, almost double their passer rating over Perillo. Kenneth Walker was not his best, but Brewer was. Look at the defense. Obviously, they played a pretty damn good game. Actually got some sacks this time with a pick for Armstead, the rookie. And a dub. The Browns. Oh, let's see it. What overall even are they? Because they are not our overall. 88 overall to our 96. So that's eight overalls higher than them, which is pretty hard to, to beat. Uh, still no... <laughs> no dev up for Weary. Am I on, like... Full-on crystal Pepsi. I don't know what's going on here, but uh, I don't like what I see. Uh, defensively, Cohen's an X-Factor. I... There's someone else on this D-line that went up to X-Factor. Was it the Jenkins? Was Jenkins always an X-Factor? Surely he was, right? He was not. I, I knew it. I can sometimes remember things. Of course, Cohen X-Factor is great. The team's actually pretty good, especially defense. I mean, this is definitely about as close as the LOB you're going to get, which realistically, you know, kind of reverting back to their overalls back in the day, this is better than them, obviously. Like, they had a bunch of, you know, high 80s, maybe one player like Averill maybe got in, maybe Bennett into the 90s on the D-line. Corners were pretty good, but, you know, it was like maybe Sherman was like 97 to 99, and then corner two was like 88 to 92. We've got 93 there. Safeties are probably, you know, a bit better, but linebacker group as a whole, you know, you can compare Haggerty to Wagner, the outside linebackers. I mean, they're comparable. I think, you know, where we lack in safety, we more than make up for D-line. It's like safety, we're like, you know, a B plus, they were an A plus. D-line, they were a B plus, we're an A plus. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's, I think, I think it's, it's comparable. It's very comparable. But uh, anyways, here it is. Miles Garrett's still around. Eight overalls higher. Can we win three in a row? Four straight Super Bowl trips. If not for the stupid game management of the game, could have been four straight Super Bowls, which I don't think we've ever done on the channel. I don't think it's actually happened, but uh, a little irrelevant here as the Jets decided to ruin us with 
clock management issues as their Browns are going to come out scoring quickly. 14-10, though, with a little bit of a comeback. And just like that, 17-14, we're in the lead. Halftime, it'll be a close one, 24-21. We throw another pick. It's all tied up. We have a seven-point lead. We have a chance to go up by 10. We do. And that'll be the win. Three straight Super Bowl wins to cap off one hell of a, at least second half of the 10-year rebuild. Rebuild. And uh, we'll win 48-31 over the Browns. And uh, man, oh, man. Has this been a successful one? Three straight. I mean, I'm going to call this, you know, the LOB rebuilt. I know there was a lot of uh, points in this game specifically, but once again, this offense could not stop putting this defense in bad situations. Six touchdowns, two interceptions, but like so many turnovers in bad situations. Look at Taylor, though. Four touchdowns, pretty impressive. Like just all the time. Just like stop. Giving them so many good field position situations, and I don't know to tell you. What about the actual, like, numbers themselves? It was like time of possession was still in our favor, but not by much. Total yards, I mean, offense about 400. So the defense really wasn't that great like it normally is, but, man, what was that second quarter, though? What was that second quarter? 28 points scored total, and then they obviously try to come back in that fourth quarter, but we're going to win, like I said, a third in a row. Also ended up keeping Witherspoon, so we would lose Hargrove, and there might have been like a lineman or something in there. But for the most part, the team would still be pretty damn intact. Once again, going to show you no funny business. The postseason, 1-1-1. One, one, one. Those are the games played. And I kind of want to see what actually would the team look like, because I can't remember exactly who we're letting go. But, uh, oh yeah, we lose Kenneth as well. That actually is pretty massive, in fairness. Our run game completely shoots to the ground, which... Is not a good look. Hell, he might even... Nah, he wouldn't retire. He's, he's older, but he's not, like, that old. Speaking of retirements, take a look at who actually was retiring. None of our starters. Just some backup depth guys. They're pretty good, in fairness. Some mentors in there, obviously, as well. Let's take a look at our money. We'd have uh, a lot of negatives, but should still have some sort of positive heading into the uh, the off season. Maybe he should have got rid of one of those linemen, but I just wanted to keep him intact as much as possible. So, 8 mil negative... As far as who we would want to keep, fifth-year option for Murphy, I think you definitely trade him off for high value. I mean, someone like him is a top-ten pick. You know, he's just getting wasted because, you know, we couldn't throw away the value of that pick, and we decided to ruin him. If nobody wanted to pay up, we just ruined him. We lose the DT, we lose the running back, everyone else, not too bad. But that is pretty big, specifically that running back. But, yeah, the team would still be really good. Either way, let's take a look. First things first. Nah, let's not first things first. Let's take a look at some of the rosters. Roster, rostered players, I should say. Almost turned into uh, a rosterman. Brewer, uh, 99 release, 99 short. Uh, you know, just uh, Mike Evans with speed, which is kind of scary to think about, honestly. Uh, very good stiff arm. Get a very good break tackle. Decent truck for a wide receiver, at least. Kind of want to see what Kenneth's looking like anyways, even though he's kind of regressed. I mean, that's still definitely a player I'd be willing to keep on the roster if we had the money. JSN, he's regressed down to a 94 overall. No, math, 95 overall. Releases down, but he's still really good. Very good catching and decent route. Well, not even decent. Great route running, just that release kind of sucks. I guess I'll take a look at Weary. He is pretty damn high of an overall now. 93 overall, still super young. Short accuracy, needs some work. But overall, he is pretty good and has won three straight Super Bowls. So what can you really argue there? One of the greatest of all time already. You know, I've talked about it. Not really too much, but I've argued that, you know, technically if Mahomes wins a Super Bowl here in real life, there is definitely arguments to call him better than Brady, just because will there ever be another three-peat? I mean, that's a lot to ask for. I'm just going to say it, you know. I don't think you have to be have the most Super Bowls to be the greatest ever if the eye test passes and you have a good amount of Super Bowls. And there's a reason why for a while there was still arguments that Rodgers was the GOAT. And, that, I mean, his rings aren't even close to, you know, he's got one. But then, obviously, you know, Mahomes came along and some other guys throwing some uh, some passes that, uh, you know, once thought only Rodgers could do. But, that, obviously, that's kind of it's kind of water under the bridge. Still one of the greatest ever. But, and, you know, still could argue in his prime the greatest thrower of the football ever. But those rings obviously matter. And that's why we talk about three-peat. It is hard to beat. And look at how good uh, Haggerty is, though. I mean, there's a reason why we never wanted to let him go. He's really good. He's insane. Uh, Witherspoon, obviously, he's regressed, but he's still really good as a starter. 
Witherspoon is uh, on his last legs. Probably his last year as a starter, especially the value of him. Pierce never getting that dev up sucks. He's already 28, and you know he's got like a couple years left in him. He's gonna you know, regress really hard soon. Johnson was just unbelievable for you know the fact that he was an X factor out the gate. That overall got to 99 pretty damn quickly. He's really strong. Play Rex up there, speeds up there. Just you know, outside of being in the 4-3, didn't really do super well, you know, sacks wise. But obviously, once we got to that 4-3, definitely played his part. Uh, you know, Aiden Hutchinson still, still really good. Would love to see that block shed up a little bit higher, but still really good anyways. Hargrove about to be gone, more of a block shed guy than an actual power move guy. And then Jenkins is a guy that we really haven't. Ah, come on, Aiden, why are you doing this to us? Jenkins is a guy that I really haven't seen a whole lot of in this one at all, which I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I just haven't really looked at him. Uh, 98 block shed with 79 power move. So you've you know, got your edge getting to the quarterback and your DT's locking up the run game. Not the worst way to do it. And that's pretty much it, right? I guess we'll take a look at Turner's in 85 overall now. He's almost maxed. It's pretty much it there, but do want to take a look at the uh, you know seasonal or I guess not even seasonal career stats for some of the guys we have. Any NFL records broken as well? Let's take a look. So I think season may you know let's take a quick look at career. Why not? So uh, we have Mahomes at sixty-eight thousand one ten. Passing touchdowns, Mahomes at 5.56. Rushing yards, Josh Jacobs. Rushing touchdowns, Josh Jacobs. Wide receivers, you got a couple of names in there like Justin Jefferson and C.D. Lamb and Travis Kelsey and Devontae Adams and D.K. Metcalf and Stephon Diggs. As far as receiving yards goes, definitely a little bit tougher to catch up to the top. Jefferson's up there, Lamb's up there, Adams, Wilson's up there. Touchdowns, uh, Ayuk. At number three, which is a little surprising. Defensive sacks, number one, Miles Garrett, just by a little bit. Four sacks. Interceptions, I'm kind of just quickly looking, but I don't see anyone even close. Who would have thought? Season numbers, anyone beating any season numbers? Not just tying or anything. I want to see beat. Rushing Derrick Henry, I mean, that's yeah, that's that. Josh Jacobs, just over 2,000 yards. Uh, Pacheco for touchdowns, rushing 24. Henry up there. Pacheco again. McCaffrey receiving yards and uh, nobody receiving touchdowns Garrett Wilson Ayuk Ayuk Rashi Rice catches in general and uh, not gonna see it defensive sacks believe it or not a few actually 24 you know there's a lot of guys in here uh, Bosa the most recent dude in 2023 he'd been pretty damn old as well interceptions not going to happen, and that is that for the records. Career stats, Weary, 139 touchdowns to 36 interceptions, 70% completion percentage, which is really good, 110 passer rating overall. Kenneth Walker, just about 15,000 yards rushing, almost 150 receiving or rushing touchdowns. Wide receivers, uh, Brewer's a bit younger, but would have thought he would have caught up a little bit, especially for yards per catch. Getting beat by JSN. Taylor, obviously unbelievable, really good stuff. Blocking. Do we really want to see this? Braxton Jones, 93. Well, not a whole lot of, uh, you know, offensive linemen that were here from the beginning with us, at least specifically. Pass rush, Johnson, 58. Phillip Jenkins with 55. Hargrove with 47. Aiden, who was only here for a little bit. I won 61. Picks, Witherspoon with 18. Fiddleman with a 10. Gotta love saying his name. Turner, 82% completion percentage for field goals is pretty good. Blocked three times. Dixon over 50 yards per punt on average, which is good. Kick return, punt return game. Don't really have much history there. And even if we did, it would all just be zero for us specifically. But for the last measure, I kind of want to see the league history uh, real quick. Seahawks win the Super Bowl. Weary is your MVP. Seahawks win the Super Bowl. Weary is your MVP. Seahawks win the Super Bowl. And Kenneth Walker is your MVP. We lose the Super Bowl. And Brees Hall is your MVP. Chiefs win the Super Bowl. Mahomes is the MVP. Highsmith for the Steelers is MVP. Chiefs, Mahomes is, uh, again wins MVP. The Eagles win. Jalen Hurts is MVP. The Ravens win in OA is going to be your MVP. Uh, and then the Ravens win before that. Derrick Henry is your MVP. And then, of course, real life is what it is. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this 10-year rebuild of the Seattle Seahawks, maybe let me know by leaving a like, subscribing if you're new. If you're not new, I do appreciate your support of the channel. 
Going to be College Football 25 soon enough. Uh, probably going to see, or maybe, maybe have seen College Football, uh, uh, like a trailer. I think it's Ultimate Team today, if I'm not mistaken. Earlier today, if not, it is what it is. Um, maybe check out the second channel, Pierre Plays, doing a lot of Texas Chainsaw Massacre content there. I don't know what it's going to be like when College Football 25 releases and then Madden, because that's a lot of different games to be doing content on. Um, so we'll see. I'm not sure what it's going to be like. It's going to be a busy one, though, I'll tell you. These these next two months, minimum, probably the next four plus, going to be very busy. And uh, definitely keep your eye out on the channel. Maybe follow me at Jordan Jumpy Carrick. Definitely need to be more active there. But what's there to post, you know? It's just a bunch of, like, toxicity on Twitter and everything. Maybe I just need to be toxic. I don't know. Random memes. That's about it, though. If you guys have a team you want to see next, let me know in the comment section below. We're, once again, talking about College Football 25. We're coming up on that. And while I'm going to try to still do 10-year rebuilds or some sort of rebuilds here and there until Madden 25 comes out, it could be, like, you know, tough to do. So, uh, you know, it could just be the next two are Bisons and then our Texans franchise. If you guys still want to see 10-year rebuilds of those, I might even just turn them into 10-year Sims. I talked about that. Let me know what you guys want to see with that. I'm, I'm not, not a huge fan of rebuilding teams that don't need it. But regardless, long intro, long video is long enough. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya.